first item on our agenda is to know that this meeting may be video or audio recorded. Second item on the agenda is to request for general public comment. I would note that generally for topics that have not already been scheduled to be or included in the uh, uh, in the agenda. But is there any request for public comment um, or any, any possible public comment for items that are not already on the agenda? Um, the third is approval of the minutes that were distributed um, uh, by email. Motion to accept those, those minutes. So moved. Okay. Second. Mm -hmm. Next item on the agenda um, is the public hearing uh, request for local historic district certificate of appropriateness pursuant to section 195 of the Northampton Code work to include the demolition of the Gallery Center, installation of parking area, and related landscaping and site work, renovation of Gator Hall, including and rebuilding of the kitchen addition, and a new addition to the structure. Um, 1924 LLC, 46 and 52 Round Hill Road, partial 31B-004 and 006. I have also, um, because of the uh, crowds I had, some additional this, this uh, item, agenda item, referred to Northampton Code, um, which is a, basically the code that governs the historic district uh, in Northampton. And um, for those of you who may not be familiar with it, um, I had some of these printed up simply because I thought it would inform any questions that you might have. Um, so if you have read it, please pass it along. I'm sure there's not enough for everybody here, but it can help. And, um, I just think that if you would over here, probably just take one. Um, but it, it identifies it identifies the areas that, um, that may be considered by this body, this Park Commission, and the areas that um, uh, the homeowners or, or property owners can do without coming to us and the areas uh, that must be uh, uh, where the property owner must come to us. So it, uh, if you go through that, uh, I think you'll find it in just one of the one copy you can um, at Cerro Valley, uh, who is over here in the gray shirt, um, and it's uh, from the planning department and which has these commission meetings. And she can be copied later. Right? They're also available on the web, of course. Um, all right. Uh, so let's begin the public hearing. Um, we'll begin with uh, presentations. Uh, my name is Tom Douglas. I'm an architect in Northampton. And um, Jim Hebert is my client. He's part of the develop development team up at Round Hill Road. He's going to, his company, Check Riders, is going to purchase the west side of the Clark campus. So this is just a site plan to orient you. This is the existing site plan, Round Hill Road right here. This is Gaywith, the big main brick building. This is the gymnasium with the pool. This is Skinner Hall. And then this is Park, that's a tennis court right there. And so right now there's a sidewalk that cuts straight down here to a crosswalk. And we're currently renovating these two buildings right here, Rogers, the big white brick building with a mansard roof and Hubbard, big red brick building, those are going to be apartments. So, so this is a bigger site plan. Gaywith, the gym right here, the tennis court, and the boiler house. So those are the three pieces we have to talk about tonight. But they're three different, they're independent projects for each one of these. At Gaywith, um, which is an 1880s and 1870s building. We have one part of it right here that's a 1965 addition to the building. So it's not, a, not deemed a historic resource that contributes to the campus. So that's project number one. Number two is the gym right here. That also is a 60s building that the National Park Service has, um, which is a National Trust for Historic Preservation has um, given us a letter discussing the entire campus stating specifically that this building 
it's not a historic resource that contributes to the overall architectural um, character of the campus. And the third project is the boiler house back here. So the boiler house it was originally a brick building right here. Um, that's the one with the big chimney. And this is Bancroft right here. That's Bancroft Road. And this is the big open lot back there. Everything you see in gray is parking and driveway now. There's, there's standing, excuse, excuse me, there's standing space over here. If you'd like to make your way in, I know you can't see from back there. So the boiler house has a couple of concrete block additions made to it over the years. I think there were coal bins and there's a shop, a mechanical shop in here. Um, there's, they're mostly below ground and um, they really pinch the road right here. They have absolutely no historic character whatsoever. They're windowless block, concrete block buildings. We'd like to take those two pieces down as well. So we've got three parts that we'd like to um, alter, alter or demolish. The 1960s Gaywith addition, the 1960s gymnasium, and then these two concrete block bunkers back there. So that next. And this is a blow up of the Gaywith um, site plan. I'm sorry. I, actually, if we turn the lights down a little bit, you can probably see the color better. Any lights okay. It's still a little hard to see the color, but um, so just to start off with Gay with right here, this is the part that we want to take down, and we're going to rebuild it right in its existing footprint. So we're not expanding the building in any way other than this little alleyway right here, which was um, they built this as kind of a separate building from that. There's a it connects right there, but we're going to infill this alleyway right here to connect the entire building. Um, this is a tennis court you can see, and then this is the gymnasium. It's outlined in yellow, but it's a little hard to see, and that's the Pratt House right next door. What you're seeing here is a proposed site plan for the whole um, Gaywith project, um, and you can see that this is all the new parking lot here, and you can see the extent of the parking right there. So that's the extent of the new parking, and the extent of the gym is this dotted line right there. So the gymnasium actually almost touches the property line back here, and it's pretty close, closer to the street here. So our parking lot is pulled in a little bit. But mostly what we're here to talk about is demolishing this building here and taking this down and altering it. So, so okay, Sarah. Sarah. She oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, this is a landscape plan. This will be talked about at the uh, planning board. Um, I'm just, just showing it for, um, just so you can see that there is one. So, okay. this, this is the existing first floor plan. I'll just whiz right through these. But this is Gaywith. This is that uh, 1960s edition that they put on. It's mostly, mostly a commercial kitchen with some dorm rooms upstairs. Here's the open alleyway right there. We're going to connect these two buildings and fill it in. Okay. Um, this is the third floor. That that um, this is the original building which we're going to renovate, and then that's the roof of the new uh, the existing kitchen. Okay. Uh, second floor dormitory rooms. We're taking those down there, and you can see the most of the rest of the building is offices and um, and dorm uh, little apartments. Okay. Uh, this you can barely see. I'm sorry, but it, it kind of goes over the amount of area that we're renovating, which is in purple, and the amount of new construction there. So there's very little new construction. Okay. And this is the same deal. This is the side elevation of Gaywith looking from the back. At the, uh, and this is the side elevation of Gaywith looking from the gym. This blue areas just represent the areas of intense new uh, building. Uh, so Sorry, this is so fuzzy. Um, so this is the proposed first floor plan, and I apologize, it's so, so hard to see, but you can see we're filling in the alleyway right here. The main door of this building is right here, off of Round Hill Road, and so the, the new entry to the building is going to be on the side here, and you'll come in this way, right there. So this is really going to be the new main entrance. This will still be left open. And this whole section of the 1880s and 1870s building, we're going to renovate to um, National Park Service standards. Me. The main entrance space is which way? Um, to the street? This, this is the old main entrance right. facing the street. Yeah. This is the new main entrance facing the new parking lot. So, so it faces Pratt House, right? Yes. Okay. So if, you, if we, we could go back to the site plan if you wanted. No, no, show. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Right. So the way, what I didn't show on that site plan is 
there's a um, driveway, a new driveway that's going to bring you in here, and the new parking lot's going to be over there, and then the main entrance is going to be right there. So you can still come in this way, but this is where we're trying to get everybody in. Um, so and excuse me, this is the office building. Sorry, this, this is the office. The, office. the, the use for this is um, office use. It's all going to be one tenant. It's going to be Jim's business. Um, he's going to expand into it over the years. He's not going to fill it up right away. Um, but we're going to renovate the entire building in this project now. So. Does everybody know what Jim's business is? No. <coughs> no? Nope. I just have a question. So the, the new business, is this going to be the business that's going to take the place of the pool? No. Is this where the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the heating plant is? No. Nope. Okay, so I'm, if, I'm not on, on the scale. If you fast forward through this, I'll, I'll show you some pictures. So it's this building right here. So, you know, this, this is the front of it yeah. from uh, Round Hill Road. Okay. That's, that's what we're calling Gaywood. Um, this, is, this is the front also, that facade is right over there. And then this is this side that faces south, the, the Gross's house um, looks at this elevation. So that's the building, that's Gaywood. So it's a little confusing. There's Gaywood Hall, this one, and Galbraith Hall, which is the gymnasium. I just call it the gym. So. Okay, so we, and that's uh, Gaywood as well. So this is a, the addition that we're gonna pretty much take down and rebuild. Um, it's brick, it has a little bit of detail. Um, it really doesn't have any historic value. We're going to add a new addition in its place. And then this whole parking lot right here is going to get, um, this is where the new parking lot's going to be. This is right adjacent to the gymnasium. And all, all the rest of the building will be renovated to the parking lot. Are you ready for questions? Yep. Well, you can ask me. Okay. We're from Pratt House. Yeah. So that parking lot is going to expand into some of the gymnasium space, correct? Yes. Okay. And how much buffer, I know in the back we're very close, how much buffer are we going to have between the parking lot and our property line, roughly? Um, we can go back to the site plan, but, but, but I have to say I'm a little confused about the gray area between historic architecture and site planning stuff. I think we should they're not of, identical? I think we should, no, they're not. And this, I think we okay. should lay the ground rules right now about what's important with the site plan and what's important with the building. I, I, Tom, I think you should finish your presentation and okay. then we'll have questions because I think probably sure. a lot of these things that are coming will be answered and if they're not, we could address them all at the end and maybe go back to one site plan and talk about site okay. if that's what you want to do. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Next, next slide. Uh, these are the existing elevations of the, the building. Okay. Uh, this is the it's an elevation of the new part of the building. So this is, if you're at the boiler house looking up towards Gaywith, you're going to see this new addition right here. And if you're in the parking lot looking from the gymnasium, you see this new addition right here. And they, this new addition right here um, picks up some of the historic elements of, of the existing building, like the ga gable roof here. It respects the height of uh, Gaywith. Like because the roof starts here, it's a two-story building, not a three-story building, so it's coming right off the top of the mansard or the bottom of the mansard roof, and it has large windows that um, are very historic-looking. They're, they're big, modern um, Marvin windows. They're uh, wood windows with real um, divided lights, not divided lights, but simulated divided lights. And I'll show you a cut sheet of those. It'll have a little roof deck on the top, so if you go on, there's some 3D models. So that's looking from the street, from Round Hill Road. That's Gaywood. You can see just in the background. That's the um, the addition that we're going to create on the foundation of that uh, 60s building. So the reason this is set down low is because Round Hill Road is lower than the building. So we're trying to keep that new building. You know, it's it's further back. It's not so prominent on the street. A lot of landscape landscaping you're not seeing here will um, screen it. And it's got some historic features, but it's a modern building as well. Okay. As you go around, yeah, with this is the new entrance right here. It's an all glass entrance. Um, another thing that the National Park Service really does encourage is that when you have a new building next to an old building, that you have something in the middle 
and it clearly differentiates them. And they really like it if it's glass because it's, um, you're using a very modern material. It's a clear distinction. So this is the main entrance. Like I said, there's a handicap ramp behind this brick wall. These are very large windows, big rectangular windows meant to complement these windows here. Okay. All right. And um, it's got different size windows. These are large ones, these are little ones. They've got little transoms. Um, and then this is a big projecting canopy right there. Uh, this will be a big, tall, well, it'll be, the, the floor plan is like a donut. There's a big hole in the middle of it. So part of this big gable on the inside will be steel framed with exp exposed steel frame uh, trusses. And then um, it'll be a big, tall ceiling. Okay. Uh, further around, it'll have a roof deck on top that you can't really see much from here. And then it'll have a lower deck right here. Okay. And this you can see, that's the existing building there. And then this is our new addition. And then this is the section right in here, that little open alleyway that we're actually, that's the one spot where we're building a new building. Um, I only say that because we can't, um, we have to get a, uh, we have to get permission to add to the building in that spot. And the only way we can actually uh, add to the building in that spot is if it's a stair or an elevator and it does contain an entry stair for the building. Uh, this is a Photoshop rendering showing ski with the new addition and then this is that proposed driveway that would cut up here into the new uh, parking lot there. So uh, we can go back and look at the site plan and talk about the driveway but uh, that's what it, roughly what it would look like now. We're trying to keep as many existing trees as we can. Okay. Um, this is the cladding material we're using. That right there. So um, it just happens to be on a historic building. But it's, uh, we're not using brick. We're trying to differentiate the new, our building from the old, uh, partly to keep it somewhat modern, but partly because the National Park Service really does encourage you to differentiate between new and old. They don't want you to just build a duplicate of an old building where you can't tell the difference between past and present. Um, they want you to build a building of our time. So one of the, <coughs> the new, modern, very, very durable materials now is um, it's a concrete panel. And um, I brought some samples of it. It's a thin panel. Right here. Comes in a four by ten sheet. Uh, we can get it in different colors, and it's attached to the side of the building um, with an airspace behind it. And uh, it's a great high performance building material that is the future of building now. So, like I said, it comes in a four by ten sheet, and we can cut it up into any size we want. And what we're proposing is that we cut it up into. Um, like eight inch by 36 inch long planks. And we lay it up in a linear fashion, like a brick, but it's a much larger brick. And we don't want it to look like a clabber at all. It has real small joints between it. So it's a linear fashion laid up like a brick course. Um, we had toyed around with doing kind of a stone look like that, where there's big and little blocks, but um, we were discouraged from doing that by uh, National Park Service. But we are using a color that's different from the um, main building. This is just an example of the window we're using. This is Deerfield Academy. Um, it's a project I, I worked on. And this, this whole addition right here is brand new. We added to their dining hall. And so these are the windows that I'm talking about. They're a Marvin window that's a wood window. It's clad with metal on the outside with transoms and a big double hung. So this is a very similar window that we're using and, and the doors as well. So. Um, okay. And that's an example of the simulated divided lights that we're using. Okay. Um, there's another question about lighting. I know that there's, uh, I can't really talk about light levels tonight, but we are going to use the light fixture that is historic um, in nature. We started off with a more modern light fixture that, um, that um, really didn't fit the character of the, the campus, so <coughs> that's existing horrible screen on it, but we can use, okay, Sarah, we can use a new light fixture that's very, very similar, that's an LED fixture that has optics that shine the light 
uh, more in a downward direction rather than out. We don't need the screen. So this is a light fixture that's proposed for the Gaywood parking lot, the big new one. And um, again, I'm not talking about light levels now. That's for the planning board. But this is just the way it's going to look. So next. Um, these are the posts. There's different kinds of posts you can get it on. OK. Next. And there's some small um, building lights that we'll use. And this is an example of one that we can use. It's, it's a real small little down light. We we'll use fixtures that are LED, that are dark sky, um, that are very discreet, small size, um, just to light the area underneath, the, the, against the building. So this will be mounted on the side of the building. And we'll probably use this at the boiler house as well, um, trying to find a fixture that doesn't, isn't overpowering, isn't like crazy historic looking, um, and only lights the ground around it. Okay. Um, so now I, I can switch gears a little bit to Gaywith, I mean Galebreth. Um, so because Galebreth is the gym that we'd like to um, take down. And uh, if you have any questions about the reason that we'd like to take it down, we can talk about that later. But I just want to go over what it looks like now and why we're. Tom, when you say the gym, you're also talking about the pool. Yeah. The pool is in the gym. Yeah, yeah. The, gym. So yeah. the Galbraith Center has okay. the gymnasium, the pool. locker rooms, and the pool. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, it's essentially a one-story building with a basement in it. So, so this, uh, well, that's it. Right? Yeah. So Round Hill Road, Rogers Hall, the gym, the gym there. Um, this is where the new driveway is going to be, right up through here. Uh, that's gay with the okay. uh, This is a higher shot. It's got the gymnasium back here, so that's the basketball gym. It's got a little community room right here. The main entrance is there, and then the pool is beyond it. So, tennis courts there. So we're going to expand the parking lot over into not the entire limits of the gym, but we're expanding further. Uh, we're not as far, uh, not as close to the property line as the gym is, but we're expanding into that area where the gym is located. Okay. Uh, that's one of the entrances, with the main entrance there, front. Tennis courts, our tennis courts there, parking lot. Do the tennis courts stay? No, they become part of the parking lot. Okay. We can go back to the site plan and I'll show you where the tennis courts are. Um, I just took this because you can see this is the proximity of the two buildings right there. But the, all the locker rooms are below ground pretty much, and then that's the gymnasium and beyond. So that's the pool right there. So, um, the, the reasons we, some of the architectural reasons we'd like to take that building down is, like I said, it's not a contributing resource to the architectural fabric of the campus. Um, it was built in a style that's kind of pseudo international style, but it's a really poor um, example of it. It really has nothing to do with the rest of the historic campus at all. Um, and it's difficult to find a use for that building as well. So just if you look at the architectural character of it on the surface, I think that you'll see that it doesn't really fit within the character of that historic campus. Okay. Uh, more pictures of the gym and Pratt House. Okay. You can see how close it is back there. So our parking lot will not be that close like there, back there. And this is where there'll be a bermed area to uh, help to shield the parking from this area. Okay. Um, the third thing is the boiler house. So this is the site plan. Here's Bancroft right here. This is the historic part of the boiler house. That's the chimney right there. And this is the sloping hill. You know, this is that driveway that comes up, a very steep driveway. And just a point of fact is we can't use this driveway, and part of it's planned to be removed. And the reason we can't use it at all is because it exceeds the, um, the, um, the maximum steepness that is allowable for a commercial driveway in Northampton. So uh, we, we looked at uh, whether or not we could reuse that because this is going to be converted to three apartments. They'll probably be the most expensive apartments on the whole campus because that building has a massive amount of equipment in it. And many of the windows have been bricked in over the years. Um, it's just been really 
treated poorly over the years as a historic structure. But once we bring it back, it's really going to be an amazing industrial-like building. Three apartments will go in there, and we're trying to get enough parking spaces near that building to um, accommodate the people living in there so they won't have to bring their groceries from way, way, way down here just to get in here. So some of, one of the, what we want to do is take down this building right here, the concrete block bunker, and there's another kind of bunker-like structure right here. So there's a 12-foot height difference between the driveway right here and the floor level down here. So um, we're going to build a wall right here that terraces down, and then this will be an open space accessed by the boiler house um, residents. And then they'll get down there by foot through a new stair here that you'll see on a, uh, another uh, site plan. And they'll get down there by car, by new driveway that's proposed to come down here for a six uh, space lot. So the, there had been a question raised earlier about, well, why do we have to bring a parking lot down here? And I tried to explain that the grade difference between here and here is so steep, it would take us about that much distance just to get down there at the right grade. So we, it's really an impossible task to get from here to there along this path right here. So, and one of the other reasons that we're proposing a, a new entry into the campus, it's that one that takes you to the, into Gaywith rather than this is the entry here that you come into. Um, so you come into the campus off Round Hill and you come around this corner right here. This is a really, really tight pinch point right there. There's a couple of mirrors right here so that when you get right here, you can look on the mirror and see if anybody's coming. But it's very tight for two cars to get through that right there. So that's one of the reasons we'd like to um, take this driveway here and relegate it to a secondary drive so it's not the main entrance um, because of the tightness there. And also the other reason is because if we can get our entrance, our main entrance to the center of the campus, we're not going to be abutting a house like we are over uh, where the driveway abuts the Gross's house. So I know they were concerned for a long time. And we'll go back to site plan and look at that. They were really concerned about the amount of traffic coming into the campus right next to their house. So by putting that main driveway into the center of the campus, we alleviate a lot of those problems with lots of traffic right next to a small residence. So, okay, the next, next slide. And so this is the proposed plan for the boiler house. You can see that those additions are gone. This curvy area is like a uh, pavers with planting all the way around it. Um, there's a wall right here. There's a set of steps that takes you down. And then this is that proposed driveway that takes you down to that proposed parking lot right there next to this boiler house. That's the little engineer's cottage. It's a little single family house. That's one of the historic structures on the campus, which we're renovating and um, um, it'll be leased as a single family house. And this is a little uh, wood frame garage. Uh, this is also proposed as a possible lot in the future, but that's not part of this uh, hearing. Okay. Where's the street? Where's the floor? Uh, which street? The, the last. Round Hill. Um, on the last round, picture. Yeah, Round Hill is way is down, there. way down yeah. here. So this is Bancroft, right there. Okay. Got it. And this is that that long kind of skinny driveway. So, um, okay, we can go on. This is just a plan of the existing boiler house. This is the part we're preserving right here. It's got a ramp up to this uh, concrete ramp structure. This is that concrete block bunker here, no windows. You go back through a little vestibule there. There's a chimney right there. The main entry to the building will still be right here, and it'll be three store, three apartments in there. And we'll restore all the missing windows. We'll repair all of the broken windows. We'll do everything under the guidance of the National Park Service. And um, I think in the end, it's going to be a really beautiful building. Uh, this is an existing elevation. These are windows that have been filled in with brick over the years, and that's a garage door, and this is a horrible metal door they cut in. But it does have some really amazing arched windows, and beautiful brickwork. Um, this is the block bunker there. You can see most of it's kind of sunk below ground. And then you can see that the 12-foot height difference between there and there is pretty significant. So. Okay. All right. 
Uh, this is the elevation if you're looking through that block building at the boiler house. So that's the boiler house. You're inside of the block building right there. So we'll, these are old former windows that were there before um, this block bunker was built. So we'll restore those to the way they were before. And this will be the level of the patio in front of the, the apartment there. And this will all be gone. Okay. That's the side elevation. All these windows have been bricked in over the years. And then that's the bunker right there you can see. So the chimney. That's the way it exists. Kind of two levels of bunker there. This one, I think, actually can support a car. I don't know what's inside of it. <laughs> um. Don't you want to keep it? <laughs> <laughs> That's a little engineer's cottage where the driveway will snake down over there between the garage and the engineer's cottage. And that'll be restored. OK. And uh, we'll keep the chimney. We'll get rid of stuff like this. Um, this will become a big new window. Uh, that goes away. You can see the stairs and the ramp and the elevation. The height difference is really significant. So, Tom, on that photograph, where would the parking spaces be? Pretty much, I'm standing in it. So, pretty much right there. We're trying to get it as tight to the building as we can without it, you know, being too close. And you can see this is the really tight point between this corner and then the building right behind it. But this all goes away. We build a wall right here, and then there'll, there'll be a terrace uh, patio down there below. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, this, so, you know, we heard a lot. I went to the neighborhood meeting last week. Uh, and it was really good for me to hear a lot of the comments. So uh, there were a lot of comments about lighting of that boiler house parking lot. And so I've, I've been talking with a number of people and we had proposed a light on a 14 foot pole, a few lights, I think three lights, on, to light that parking lot on 14 foot poles. And I think that we can um, substitute those light fixtures for something much smaller, a bollard, bollard is just a post with a light on it. Um, so something that's not going to be as high, that's not going to shine down the hill, you won't look up the hill and see these big lights. Um, so this is what we're proposing to light that little six-car parking lot. And it's uh, 41 inches tall. It just shines light down. You can see pictures of it. It's, um, it's going to be a very subdued, low light that any landscaping would completely shield from the Bancroft side. So it's going to be kind of dim for that parking lot, but it's, it will be much better for the neighbors around it. So I don't have a plan showing the layout of where these are going to go yet. Um, I don't have the optical study yet. I'll have those for the planning board meeting on Thursday. But I just wanted to show you what we're thinking about now, so rather than those big, tall street lights. OK. Uh, that's another example of something. All these bollards come in, uh, if I get one that looks really historic, it shines light up. So the best ones are the very modern ones that keep the light down. So it's a compromise you have to make. Okay. And that's it. You want to go back to the site plan? So. I think that's the end of my presentation. Okay. Um, is, are you the only one presenting from the petitioners? Pardon me? Are you the only one presenting? Yes. And okay. Unless you, I, I mean, Jim can answer questions, but um, yeah. Okay. Good. Um, could someone turn the light? Do we have any more visuals? Well, if you want to just point at the site okay. plan with could the questions. You, so. you can go back one. Okay, that's a good one. Great. Um, so we will ask for uh, comments from the audience. Uh, I will ask that you, because of the number of people here and um, obvious level of interest, please make your comment. Be aware of what this committee does and doesn't do. Um, as you can see in the section 159, um, Chapter 195, 
uh, um, documents that are sent around. Um, this committee does not have purview over site plan. It does not have purview over parking lots, over vegetation, over land. I wish it did. <laughs> uh, I love Old Town as every person in this, in this uh, body, and in fact, we would welcome your participation in the future because we, in fact, are in the process of coming up with proposals to the city council that would allow us to have greater control over features that might have impact on the star property. Um, so it is with regret that I tell you those things. At the same time, we can't invent rules. We have to abide by city ordinance. Um, so the reason I handed out section 195 is so that you can see that if you're if you have a comment about landscaping, grading, terraces, walks, right of sidewalks, planning, removing a so run, removing the trees, um, that's planning department issue. We, I would love to talk about it. I love trees as much as I love how the we can't do it's not in our purview. Um, we are explicitly prevented from having a purview over parking lots. I wish we weren't, but we are. That's an area where we hope to see some change in the future. Um, we can't even regulate lighting fixtures. Again, same comment. Um, so, so we welcome your comments, but I don't want you to feel frustrated by bringing up an issue that is not relevant to this, to this particular um, um, committee. What we do have uh, control over is what, what's allowed in here, and if you have questions about that, we certainly welcome it. But now, um, because of the number of, of people here, um, I would like to ask if you could, um, you, as, as the city council does, confine your comments to about three minutes. I don't know a timer, I'll rely on your, on your um, best estimate. Um, <laughs> if you have questions for the petitioner, those are certainly welcome. Um, but why don't we uh, take questions? Sure. Um, I don't have a question. Well, I, perhaps I do have a question. I, and um, I guess you prefaced it by perhaps telling me where the correct forum to address our concerns right. would be. Um, I'm one of the resident owners of the Crab House. And our concern, um, we're not in opposition in any way to the plans. Our concerns are um, for our building and property during the demolition process. Um, and the need to be sure that uh, our building level is on the, the developer uh, contractors and such. And we have concerns certainly about our, uh, when you show the tightness of our building to the property line uh, along that very edge where our 40 C systems are. Um, you know, we need to be sure that those will be protected, that whether it's winter or summer, that we'll still be able to use them without concern about, you know, dust and demolition debris and that sort of stuff. That demolition debris that will inevitably find its way onto our property will be removed. Uh, that uh, soot that discolors the building will be washed off. We'll have adequate heads up from whoever is overseeing this, a liaison, from you all to a liaison that we're going to turn our building, then we'll get a heads up and such and such is going on. And, uh, you know, that sort of thing. I mean, we have concerns about a stone wall that borders our front, and, you know, the, the vibration of demolition. Um, so we were awfully close, as you know. And so these are our concerns. And I don't know where the appropriate forum is to make sure those concerns are right. Well, I, 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 and we've, we've talked about those issues for quite a while here. And I, I know that it is really important to, to have a close relationship right. with you during the process to give you fair warning and to sort of work with you during the process because it, hold on just a second. Sorry. So, um, um, uh, so, so we, we, we have to protect your property. I, I, I so, completely so, understand so that. At, at what point and with whom would we begin to discuss uh, OEA type of well, relationship? Currently, there is a liaison on campus, Max Hebert. Um, I think that they'll, we'll have to, we'll start having, once the project is scheduled and is starting to gear up a little bit, the demolition part of it, we'll have weekly meetings. And I think once we develop a schedule, mm -hmm. then we probably should sit down with you and go over it in detail. And in the interim, can we be in the office? Um, that, 
that would be fine. And yeah. what is the proposed schedule at this point? Yeah. 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 <laughs> what I'd like to do tonight for the folks of you that are, and again, my name is Jim Hebert, by the way, for those of you that I haven't met, sorry, man, but my back is to you. Um, you know, thank you up here. If you want yeah. to I want to take a second. I appreciate you. But um, so I'm the I'm the new owner of the West Campus. I'm also the owner of Tech Writer Payroll. So uh, my company will be um, occupying the uh, little uh, gate with Hall when that's renovated. But um, as far as the uh, and I don't Pratt House, so we've had a couple of meetings. Um, but I think one of the last ones there were a number of residents of Pratt House there. I know that uh, I don't think you were there as well. I think you were, you were there. Uh, but I don't live in Pratt House. I'm still here to surprise you. So what I'd like to do tonight, if you can, is Folks that are uh, members of the Pratt House particularly, um, especially during the demo, because I know that is going to be a, um, a sensitive time when we do have that construction going on there. Um, if you can give me your, your names and email addresses tonight, I can keep that. My son Max is going to be the project manager on all the construction and demo that's going up there. So he's up there, his, his office is in Coolidge Hall now. So his door, his door is always open, so if you folks ever, ever want to walk over and get an updated schedule or anything like that, we can certainly do that, but I, um, I am more than happy to sit down with you folks on a regular basis um, to discuss the schedule for the demolition as well. Uh, so I know it's important to you, and we'll make sure that we're as uh, conscientious about your uh, your, your uh, uh, concerns as well. So if you can give me tonight your names and contact information, email that would be great. And uh, so right as of today, we don't have a particular schedule. The, the demolition still has to be approved um, by the planning board and by the uh, by historic. But once that's done, we'd like to get on that as soon as possible. And um, I haven't been involved in a demolition process like this before, but I have spoken with three different contractors and mentioned to them um, that there is going to be some concern because of the proximity of the crowd house. So, so they're aware of that, and these folks are, are professionals, and I'm sure that they'll take every precaution as necessary. So I can get your contact information, that'd be great. And you again, your business card as well. I don't have a business card, but I'm happy to, I'll write down sure. my, my email addresses. Uh, my, uh, but I know this isn't the forum for um, you know, discussing the plans in particular, other than the historical um, items that are that are on the board, but I'm happy to meet with you folks at any time that you want. I'm in Northampton regularly, I'm on the site at least a couple of times a week. And I'm uh, more than happy to sit down with you folks to discuss uh, concerns as a group or individually as well. So. Thank you. Just very brief, no comments. I'm a little disoriented. The funky, the building with the funky archway where you come right tight around the house, is that involved in this at all? When you come down the hill and go to the big parking lot with the archway and the funky tight driveway, is that any of this? Is that a completely separate building? That's the building that looks renovated now, pretty renovated. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's Coolidge Hall. It's and that's done it's, with? It's, yeah, it's right okay. adjacent to the Boiler House. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah, I was confusing. Yeah, it's so. done. Okay. And, no, it's the wrong form, never mind. Okay. <laughs> get, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll get the idea. Get the idea. <laughs> I just uh, ever so briefly there. Um, Excuse me, one moment, please. A lot of people, please, one conversation at a time. I'll be brief. Uh, I, I, I'm really upset when people um, um, talk over. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, what is the time frame for making a decision and approval or delay? What is your time what, frame for what's, what's your name? Oh, my name is Arvid Nelson. A R V like Victor, I D like Douglas. Lucky me. Um, uh, what is your time frame for making uh, a determination? Are you, may, may we thank you very much for this. May we have some time to look this over? A few days. Uh, does everybody in the room understand what the Historical Commission is charged with doing on this project? I, I, I mean, this gives me a, I have a clear idea now having looked at this, but I would like a... Does everybody understand that? No. 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 Okay. So David, explain. Um, we, where to start? Um, we are looking at a couple of, um, one is demolition, and the other is the 
appropriateness of the proposed changes. Um, that are visible from yeah. the public way. This is, this is newly, this area is newly part of the historic district. The historic district is controlled by city ordinances. City ordinances control those features of the buildings in the district that are visible from the public way. They do not control the back of buildings. They do not control um, uh, the interior of buildings. Um, furthermore, they do not prohibit all change. They, they're with, with approval, change can occur even on the front, but it is regularly and subject to review of this commission. There are a wide variety of items that are specifically prohibited from our consideration, as I said earlier, uh, and those are listed in, in the, the handouts and uh, um, on the web if you go to them. So we are primarily looking at and preserving the, the physical aspect of, of buildings uh, that are facing the public way in the buildings that sit in the historic district. That's all that we do. Uh, we do not do site plan. We don't look at setbacks. We don't do a lot of the things that I think any homeowner has a very, very reasonable reason to, to be concerned about. Uh, and there are bodies in, in, in the city that, that um, uh, do uh, treat that. So I would, I would recommend that you, you talk with a planning board on, on that. Um, but our, our responsibility is to try to make sure that a beautiful, historic neighborhood uh, is preserved as much as possible within the, the purview of our work um, so that it is there to enjoy for, for people, for citizens in North town for years to come. Um, it is not to completely stop all progress. It's not to prevent anything from changing, but to preserve it as much as possible. Um, this kind of balance between what you would like versus what um, you're actually able to, to, to regulate is normal because a lot of the, uh, a lot of residents in, in um, historic districts um, don't want to be regulated on every single little thing. Occasionally they do. You know, there's some districts where you can't paint your house a certain color unless you get approval, or um, you know you can't uh, uh, change a bush in front of your house or something like that. This isn't that district, and it won't be unless people want it to. Uh, it's, it's really up to the residents of the district and the city council to create the terms under which everyone works and lives. But currently, these are the terms um, this, that, are, that are represented here. So it's our responsibility to try and see that those are upheld. Um, Martha, do you want to continue on? I'm sure yeah, it wasn't I, I would be happy to yeah, you know, make some comments yeah. on this. Um, as part of the Elm Street Historic District, uh, every property owner should be aware of the design guidelines that have been prepared uh, for individual properties and all of that. Uh, that sort of tells you what is appropriate as far as making changes to the building. And I think that's what we're, we're looking at, changes to the historic character of the buildings. We're also concerned with demolition. And this particular project has another overlay to it that in effect goes beyond the purview of this board uh, at relative to the historic appearance and demolition. And that's the fact that the applicant is applying for investment tax credits, as I recall, uh, under the um, National Historic Preservation Act of 1966 uh, that creates a situation uh, where there is actual design review by professional architects and architectural historians through the State Historic Preservation Office to make sure that the work that is done on a historic building is appropriate. They have guidelines that were written back in the 1960s, modified over the, the decades. You know, they're this thick that tells you what's appropriate to do with windows, what's appropriate to do uh, you know, with exterior building materials, roofing, anything like that. And they will be actually reviewing this project. And I think uh, the architect here, Tom Douglas, has been working with them with some of the review processes. So there is that really super design review 
relative to um, uh, the historic design elements. Now, one of the key elements, I think, and I think Tom pointed this out, is that when you have an original building, there's one way to treat that, and that is to work with the existing properties. It's better to preserve um, and restore than it is to replace and all of that. But when you're creating a new structure or an addition or some linkage, um, preservation philosophy says that you should be able to stand in front of that and say, wow, there's the 1880 building, and look, there's the 2016 building. The architects of today have to have the same opportunity to <coughs> glory that the architects of the 19th century did. And so I think you'll see that reflected in the design that's presented here. You know, that's why they look different. It's not a fake addition coming onto the building. Uh, and also the fact that the uh, State Historic Preservation Office, uh, as part of the National Register listing of this district, uh, which is over and above what Northampton does, has designated certain properties as being historically contributing to the quality and other buildings that are not contributing. And it's been clearly pointed out that the gymnasium, you know, some of the other things, they're, they're not part of the history or historical character that should be preserved. So those are some of the issues that uh, you know we're looking at from the level of our guidelines that there are folks higher up uh, that are also reviewing this process. And if they see something that they don't like, you're not going to get your investment tax credits. And if those go away, the project's probably going to go away. So you're going to be very careful and working with your architect and working with them to do something that uh, uh, meets their, their guidelines as well as our guidelines. Uh, th thank you. So just uh, very, th that's extremely important. Just very, very quickly. So there are, there's the local historic, there's also a state historic and a federal. So there are, are, are there three different? Uh, okay. Um, the National Register of Historic National Places Register, right. was set up in 1966. Okay. It is administered by the National Park Service. Okay. As their agents, in every state and territory around the country, they have what's known as a state historic preservation I see. Okay. Okay. And so a project goes through the state, the state does what they do, okay. they send it on up to national, I see. Uh, and they, they work together. So it's a teamwork kind of thing. I see. The national standards and things like that are set up mm -hmm. at the national level and at every state level. Okay. They have a group of qualified people that work with property owners right. and uh, uh, state or uh, right. projects within that community. And they have their own additional set of regulations and guidelines. Is, yes. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. If you want to look those up, go yeah. online and look for the Secretary of the Interior's Standards for Rehabilitation. I think that's what it's called. Okay, I'll, but, I'll find yeah, it. Okay, there it you. is. Right. And you, you can okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go to town. Right. And then, um, just ever so br briefly, what is the time frame for your making a decision? Um, uh, the commission has 30 days. From 30 days. To issue or do okay, or great. That is it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Do you always want her name before we speak? Or, uh, Andrew Batchelor, B-A-T-C-H-E-L-O-R. Is there a particular standard that the board applies when trying to uh, decide whether or not to approve the demolition of the gymnasium? Is it just we're okay with it, or is there a particular term of art or anything that you follow? So the commission would have to determine that any building within a local historic district that's, deter that's proposed to be demolished has no significant historic merit or historic relationship to the district. And is it fair to say that when you make that decision, you don't put into consideration what will go in its place? So when you right. decide on demo demolish, whether or not to demolish the gym, your decision is the same whether it's going to be replaced by a six-story building, a park, or a parking lot. Is that correct? Yeah. Thank you. And then, um, I, I guess my concern, and, and when you look at the historical nature of all the buildings uh, on this campus, I think how they interrelate with each other is important. Um, not just in terms of the grounds, but the buildings themselves. Um, and I know that uh, Skinner is, it has not yet been decided what they're going to do with. And so I would just hope that this board, when they decide how they're going to vote, 
that they think not only about um, how one building looks in the abstract, if you're just said, this is sort of an ugly um, pool building, you know, this isn't what we would design. But if you think about how the buildings interplay with each other and campuses across the country have buildings from different areas and different ages and they work together. Um, and, and this is a project that's going to be ongoing and, and I hope that the board takes that into consideration. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I would just yeah. like to add that people know that though if new construction was put in after the demolition board and an empty lot that existed in the district, am I correct to say that you have jurisdiction over the new construction so it's not only existing buildings but it would be but it'd be a separate vote. This one could be torn down and then there'd be right. a vote. Right, and then there would be that whatever came to the table, they would have, they would have, uh, again, would have to be approved by the, by the And again, to answer your question, also, you know, look more detail. We look, obviously, at the age of the structure. Um, and the older structure is more to pay attention to its, its um, uh, role here in, in Northampton. Um, we look at it being um, how prevalent a certain style is, uh, whether this is one of a few or one of many. Um, we look at um, sometimes condition, um, because there are certain some buildings that are that have gone uh, rehabilitation. Um, we um, uh, look at historical events that might have occurred or historical figures who might have lived in a certain building. Um, you're using the sort of Hewlett Packard garage standard. Uh, there, there are certain buildings that are historically significant, even if they, if, even if they look uh, modest. Um, so all of those go into um, into, the, into our judgment. Generally speaking, if it's if it's 100, uh, excuse me, before 1900, um, you automatically will give it a very thorough evaluation as for it. So uh, whether we should give a uh, an approval for demolition. If it's um, between 1900 and what, 1939, if I remember correctly? Well, that's outside the outside the historic Pardon district. Me? That's outside the historic district. So yeah. all all buildings proposed yeah, here. If it's the city line, um, we will look for its its whether presently whether it's a, a representative real model for a certain kind of style or, or historical role in the city. So we try to, I mean, we approach all demolitions with great regret and often try to, to uh, use the, uh, the process to help owners think about alternate ways that they get to use the building to help save it, preserve it, um, and in some cases move it um, in one another case. So um, it's done with, with great thoughtfulness. Yes? My name is Brenna Pye. I live at 60 Crescent. I just want to follow up on the two previous questions. I understand then that the building is considered on its own whether the demolition is acceptable or not. And then if another structure were to be erected, that would be considered separately. But if a parking area were to, if it's a parking lot, that's not at all within the purview of the same right. committee, correct? So it becomes a piecemeal kind of process, doesn't it? Yeah, I think, so I think David mentioned something really important is we are in the process of reviewing the existing ordinance just for this purpose. And so, uh, you know, change, we may be proposing changes to the ordinance to, you know, tighten it up a little bit. Um, I think when the ordinance proposing was passed... Proposing changes to the ordinance specifically, what do you mean? To the, to specific, to the historic district, so mm -hmm. specific things that we can, uh, you know, pass judgment on. Mm -hmm. A lot of things that David mentioned, I think people are here concerned about tonight, like the landscape, the parking, the curb cut, the uh, trees, the... Um, amount of pavement. Amount of payment. We don't. That's all planning board stuff. Right. So um, we, you know, we're in the process of reviewing all that. And I think what I just wanted to say is that when this uh, district was formed back in the '90s, um, there was a lot of negotiation that had to happen to make it uh, make it a possibility because there were many people that didn't want it. And so in order to make it happen, um, there were concessions that had to be made back and forth. So we got, you know, we got a district may not be as uh, regulated as. Some people would want, but it, it was put in place so that it was a kind of a consent or a heavy medium. So um, if we are proposing changes and people are really concerned about that, um, you know, your support would be great. But I, I think another quick thing about that is that 
you're regulating and reviewing architecture, but the planning board really does review the design of the parking lot. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they have yes. a full mm -hmm. guideline for parking lot mm -hmm. design and what's appropriate and what isn't. So it's not like it's just outside of the regulation process. Yeah, and the store, store commission does have the ability to at least look at the parking area, but the standards are, don't, aren't much to go on. It just says things like landscaping should be integrated to reduce overall visual impact and shield the view of physical vehicles from the street. Can but the planning, that, the you planning that again? Is, the, the historic commission has some limited ability to look at parking areas and landscaping, but the planning board does have very detailed standards over what is in the Yes, sir. Uh, my name is uh, Joachim Stieber, S-T-I-E-B-E-R. I'm concerned with the aspect of this uh, request that deals with the increase of 90 new parking spaces, because that's part of uh, the issue and I noticed that under your guidelines, parking is one of the considerations. It's not exactly like a building, but if you have a historic district that's surrounded by a residential area, if you introduce substantial new traffic, you are changing the overall complexity of that issue in a, non in a way that's quite closely related to the architecture. And what troubles me is that this request for 90 new additional parking spaces is that I've heard nothing about encouraging the, the future tenants to encourage limited use of driving. Any business operating in Northampton is asked how many of your employees will share rides, will, how many will come by bicycle, how many will reduce the volume of vehicular traffic. I've seen nothing here that suggests any effort to uh, tally with those concerns that are normally asked of businesses, new businesses in Northampton. What we are in fact being told is that they are planning to make space for future expansion of the businesses and their traffic needs. So uh, I argue that under the rubric of parking, this is not, this is has a major impact on the nature of the historical district. And you can and what you, you can require new tenants to make efforts that not all the employees come with a single car. This is standard practice uh, generally in the in the Commonwealth. Why not require it here? Where it would in fact the failure to do so means that people who have purchased homes in this area because it is both a residential and traditionally now it was a school setting, will now be faced with having a largely commercial air enterprise in the middle with a hundred and more cars coming and going every single day. This is changing the nature of the historic area as a whole. It's not strictly architectural, but it has a major impact. As, as far as, the as ride sharing goes though, the, the, this board has no authority to consider it's ride great. sharing and traffic mitigation and things like that. The planning board will absolutely be discussing them. Yes, but, yes, but I, what I'm arguing is that it has also an impact on what a historic district means to have vehicular traffic in that volume coming and going every single day. Yeah, and I don't think that it's in addition to the practical issue of the uh, that normally governs traffic regulation. That would be a question for traffic lights and the like. I'm not talking about traffic lights. I'm talking about the impact on the historic district as a district by this large volume of predictable uh, of inviting additional traffic by having 90 more spaces. And I would urge that I would you will not invite more traffic by having 90 additional spaces. So I think that we would agree with you about that, but we do not have the ability to uh, make decisions about that. But I think that if you look at the history of the campus, this what we're going through now is an anomaly for that campus. The campus was a bustling, busy place with a lot of coming and going to it, and now it's empty, and this is a big anomaly for the history of that building. Yes, sir. Uh, Jim, and then in the back. Yeah. Uh, Jim Winston, W-I-N-S-T-O-I-N-234, Crescent. 
Um, my dad used to be on this board years ago. Oh, yeah. He had, one yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he had a lot of pride in this board. Yes. Um, and, and I know one of the issues, the, the water tables, obviously that's not before this board. I just wanted clarification about um, the 30 days to issue um, a, a decision or, or some type of um, opinion. It does, uh, does that typically normally, uh, the 30 days would be used in this type of a situation? I know you have up to 30. Is that generally respected all 30 days? Generally, the, the commission would issue an organized certificate for the same user as the hearing. Generally, the commission would issue or deny a certificate the same way as the hearing. But Tonight, you have no. up to 30 days. Yes. But you have up to 30. Okay. Yes, sir. May I uh, come up there? Oh, please. Uh, Your Honor, may I approach the bench? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and could we put up the site plan C6, please? Can we put up C6? No. no. I think the technology has been uh, kind of disassembled. Then you'll have to go with uh, drawings that I have. Um, my name is Terrence Degendorf. My wife Ann and I have lived at the Yale House 88 Round Hill for the last 11 years. We're looking forward to the new neighbors. There's a lot that we've heard about the plans that we like, and we think that it's good to see the plans are in place. The topic I want to raise is definitely in your purview. It's 195-5, A17. If you brought up A6, it's the site plan that was up there earlier, and it's basically the parking area. Blown it up a little bit, and the problem that, that I want to raise with this in terms of appropriateness, as I understand it, you folks have to make a decision on whether or not to issue a certificate of appropriateness for this plan or how it impacts the historic district. Yeah. What I'm about to point out is I think that it's inappropriate in its current form. Good news is I also have a solution for you and no extra charge. For you. Right? That's what it looks like. All they have to do is solve this problem of putting all of this parking area right on Round Hill Road. They put in a prefabricated retaining wall. I see on this plan or the landscape plan virtually nothing that's going to block the light and the noise that's going to be associated with this. But there's a solution to it and it would be this simple. Just move it back. There is space available that says you, if you did this, you would create a whole buffer of green space on Round Hill Road. I understand the need for parking, and, I, and I'm happy to see the demolition of the gym, quite frankly. We're two doors down from it. But I don't think you have to lay this thing right on Round Hill Road. And the problem is, if you read the uh, topographic maps, it's at 172 feet elevation, and they're going to have lights 14 feet up from that. Well, the road, and you may hear from other neighbors here who are across the street and down the road, like our direction, we're at 162 feet. So we're 25 feet below the level of those lights. And I don't think you've got any plans to mitigate that light shining all around that neighborhood. So the concern I want to raise, and the, the suggestion I'd like to make is, send it back to change that because your question is is it appropriate to the historic district to have such a brightly lit large asphalt essentially heliport sitting right on top of round hill it's the highest elevation it's going to be visible for many many miles around under the design that i'm aware of that's taking place if you can relocate part of it uh, improve the lighting plan for that one as you have for the one by the boiler house, I think uh, it will look a lot better and it, and it will better serve the historic district. Well, there, there are two questions in there that we brought up. One is about the actual parking lot and, and one is the lighting, which is, are they both together or you would per, you'd be okay with the parking yeah. lot, but if the lighting was fixed? I don't know of a better way to put it than this, and that is I don't think setting this heliport on top of Round Hill it look, makes it adds to its historic significance. I think it detracts from it. I think there are things that you can do to change the shape and location of it, mm -hmm. and, and the lighting, and the landscaping, all of which is somebody else's purview, but 
you've got this overall rubber st or stamp that you either can put or not put that says, is a heliport appropriate for the top of Round Hill? Because that's what it's going to look like, okay. given the design that you've given us. Can you help me out one second? You, you said, uh, I just want to understand. Yes, sir. That section 17. A17. Would be what is Parking. Let me ask you a question. Yes. The slow speaker, so entertaining. The section 17 would be the section that, that is permissive to your suggestion. Se Section 17 is the reading from the top, exempt from historic district review. That, but David, that would be as a standalone. This, enti this entire project is subject. But, this entire project is subject to local historic district review. That would be as a stand. If the parking lot were a standalone, no, it wouldn't be reviewed. But because it's part of this, this larger development that it does. So, that, so all this historic district standards need to apply. See, there's we a good thing here. The demolition is that. going to result in the opportunity for green space and to just dump asphalt on top of it, I think, is an opportunity missed. And I don't think it adversely affects the business just to relocate that parking and lighting back into the middle of the campus rather than having it lay right on Round Hill. Thank you. I thought in the last meeting that you mentioned that the parking area was going to be somehow like below, recessed and below the road. Yes. And is that the case? Yes, so that is the case. Correct. But how much farther below the road? I mean, what's the what's the visual impact of that, of having it recessed? And how how is it going to be recessed? Is it just the natural topography there, or you you know it's going to be excavated out so that the parking is below uh, round hill? The land will go up at its current slope to where the parking lot starts, and then there'll be a stone wall, and it'll drop three feet there. So if you were an ant looking up at the grass, you just look up and see a little bit of stone wall. If, and, and the, there is a huge level difference between the round hill and the parking lot. That's the key. Um, so that as you look up, you're never going to see the parking lot because it's going to be recessed at Okay, so then how does that impact the people living nearby? If, it's, if the parking lot is recessed. It depends on the height you're looking at. It from. If you're looking at it from the second story of a residence, you'll see it. If you're looking at it from Round Hill Road as a pedestrian, it won't be in there with you. The surface of Round Hill Road is 15 feet below the surface of the park, or I'm sorry, 11 feet below the surface of the parking lot. Is that true? And then your lights are 14 feet higher than that. Well, yeah, that's why I was getting at trying to separate the light issue from the parking lot location issue, because they're, they're two very separate issues that would be solved very differently. So that's... But my, my recommendation, um, I'll give you a copy of this by drawing, by the way. Uh, I think it solves both of your issues, both of those issues. It's better for the neighborhood. Okay. I don't this isn't even the guys. historical commission's one person, and I call on them, and this is how we have to run the meeting. Um, yes, in the corner, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, my name's Ann Degendorf. I'm at the Yale House. We also not only have second floor resident, residents, we have third floor residents, which is even our higher view. So you can put all the landscaping you want, but I know this isn't historic, but if you're in a third floor, you're going to be looking down on the parking lot. You will see everything right. down below, not just eye level or below eye level. Thank you. So right now you see, um, I'm just, just so I'm clear about this when you're on the third floor looking down, you see the roof of the gym, right? Because it's only one more structure. Yes. You see the tennis court, which is also an impervious surface, paved, right? And then there's a large parking lot. Um, it's on the north side of Galway. Galway. Correct? We don't see that because the Pratt House blocks that view okay. from us. Their third floor would be able to see it, I believe. Right. So, um, you know, there's a lot of expanse of impervious plain blocky service that you're already looking down on now. Um, you know, so one thing that, the, I'm just pointing this out, one thing that the parking does is because there are requirements in the city to break up the parking and include planting uh, so it's not one big mass of parking but there are parking aisles that are right. I, there's no there's no planting plan here but I'm assuming that those would plant it on the aisles in the parking lot. Right. Right. Okay. Um, 
So you may, it may have a different effect than what you see. Um, just given what's there now. I'll leave this with you. Thank you. No, I, I saw it. Yes, ma'am. Brooks Robards, 20 Langworthy Road. I've heard only the architects discounting um, the buildings uh, that are subject to demolition as having any historical value. Um, I heard you say that you take uh, particular concern for buildings born in the 1900s. What about the case of buildings in the 1960s? Are they or are they not considered of historical value? They can be. Uh, it depends entirely on the I building. I haven't heard discussion about yeah, I, I can address that a little bit. Um, usually, buildings that would be you know, 50 years old or something like that are entering the realm of the possibility of uh, becoming historic. And so you have to look at them on an individual basis. Uh, was this a site of a historic event? doesn't have anything to do with the architecture, but it might have historic significance. Was it designed by a famous architect? Um, was it designed by an unknown architect, but it's considered an outstanding building recognized um, in its lifetime as being an outstanding piece of architecture? So you take a look at these buildings on an individual basis. I'm building off of Mr. Gotchelder's. Right comments that uh, uh, one consideration needs to be how the various buildings relate to one another. Right. Um, that has to be taken into consideration as well. Right. Yeah, the whole notion of context, the buildings in context. But here, uh, we have an interpretation uh, through the State Historic Preservation Office of uh, and they use, of course, qualified architectural historians, architects, preservation architects. Um, and their opinion is that no, these are not of historic significance. Now, if that building had been designed by Frank Lloyd Wright or something like that, uh, or somebody else that is sort of world famous, then they would take another look at that because then it becomes part of architectural history. Uh, but based on their expertise and their opinions, highly qualified people, um, they say no, not, not this, this one. But that doesn't mean that this historical commission necessarily has to follow No. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd just like to add a comment in addition. I argued before <coughs> for the overall limitation of parking. But I think it is if you have parking. There are many cities that have historical plazas and have parking. Namely, they put them underground and put grass and make it look before the way it did before. So that is an option. And why, if, these, if the developer uh, wants to create really first class uh, new land sites in uh, Northampton, why doesn't he go that route? It might be more expensive. It might be de decrease his profits but that should not be our concern. Our concern is the appearance. And if you put the, the garage, park, the garage underground and grass on top, then you don't have the heliport uh, effect uh, up on top of the ground hill. Thank you. Yes, um, my name's Anthony Gerzina, G-E-R-Z-I-N-A. I'm just looking for some guidance. How do I interpret 195-1, your purpose statement? specifically preservation and protection of, I'm making some words out, okay, characteristics of buildings and places. How would you interpret the places in that paragraph? Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Goodwin. Well, 195. You said char characters of buildings and places, I'm certainly agree with you. Well, what does places mean to you in that context? Does place mean Northampton? Does place mean Round Hill Road? Now, usually the interpretation of places is a, a place where a certain event occurred. For example, if that was where the gallows was, where they were hanging people in the 17th century, that would have a sense of history for that place. Uh, so I think that's generally the interpretation in, um, uh, by the National Park Service as well as by uh, most historic preservation. So then the characteristics of, of, a, of a historic neighborhood 
Well, and, and Does here it? again, um, the fact that the Round Hill area has been surveyed and listed or determined as eligible for listing on the National Register of Historic Places, as well as on our local historic district, means that people have interpreted this and identified which properties contribute to the quality of the district and which buildings don't contribute. And usually when you do a survey of historic areas, you look at every building that's there and say, does this contribute? Does it detract? Or is this just a neutral building in the middle that, you know, is a, a filler, so to speak? You color the maps red, yellow, green, or something. See what happens up. And the, uh, through the National Park Service, in their um, listing, or potential listing on the National Register, have done that work for us. And we're talking about qualified professionals have voiced their opinions. So, so if, if this gentleman's good plans, which unfortunately I couldn't see because of the angle I'm sitting at, but if, if those good plans were to house, as they stood, as they were presented, right, if they were to house a big Y, that would be irrelevant to you folks, or would that be relevant? A big Y. Oh, a big Y versus yeah, yeah. Yeah. In, in <laughs> one of those buildings, exactly as they were presented. <laughs> the YMCA. Yeah. Irrelevant to you? Oh, on the big wine yeah. 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 the supermarket. Yeah. Zoning ordinance. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. 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 Just as they were presented, no signs, no, no nothing. The, his it, commission doesn't deal with use. It, fine, it deals yeah, with, that's with my architecture. Question. And Good. That's my question. But yeah. I think a lot of the things that you're bringing up are really important. Yeah, the things one. that we, you know, we'll, we will, as we move forward towards uh, revisiting ordinance and what is uh, governed and what is not, for what we can review and what we can't review, um, you know, this is a perfect example of maybe it's not working as well as it could be. Um, yeah. and, and we need to, you know, we've had a few things happen in the Elm Street District in the last year that were like, wow, you know, that got away. You know, that happened and it's, we really didn't have any way of controlling that. And, you know, we regret that now. So um, I think all of this, these comments are really helpful for us and we'll, you know, take them moving forward as we can see. <coughs> yeah, I, I think just, just to follow up what I was going to say was, was simply that I'm not anti-business by any stretch of the imagination, quite the contrary, but yeah. everything has its place and, and I think that the characteristics, as I've read this and you correct me if I was wrong, mm -hmm. the characteristics of, of that neighborhood are residential right. and, and scholastic, they're academic, right. Right. it's not commercial. Right. And the question really for me is, is that appropriate for that neighborhood so versus that's the a strip mall and a yeah, That's the zoning yeah. question, and that's the planning board. I, I do want to remind everyone that the characteristic of, of that spot is in fact an institutional since for about 200 years. Um, it, it was, it had been around your school, it had been it a hospital for hydrocathic uh, medicine, um, it had been um, uh, uh, certainly uh, Park School. It had gone through there been a number of, of institutions that have been built and then torn down on that exact spot. Um, and while the, um, the surrounding homes are some of the loveliest and, and, and most, to me, the most uh, preservable in, in, in the city, um, I do have to just note that that particular spot right on top has been um, a number of institutions, uh, probably back to almost. Uh, the early 1800s. Yeah. I'm Jennifer Addis, and I live on Bank Park Road. Um, I'm curious about these, the way that you, at some point, may be reviewing the ordinance of, and what your jurisdiction, you know, what you decide about, what you don't have say about. Is that going to happen anytime soon, or is that way out beyond the scope of our concerns? We've yeah. just started discussions about that, and if any changes, we'd have to go through a public hearing process and correct Sarah about that um, before it ever went to city council for anything. So it would be um, great, you know, if we could have people coming out for any kind of public forums we have on that. Because, but as I said, you know, not everybody in the district likes it. There's some people, property owners, who wish it would just go away altogether. So you have to really uh, strike a balance with what's possible. 
in order to get it, you know, changed or pa in, passed to begin with and then changed. Well, but that has to but just on. to be clear, that this does need historic commission review, which is why everyone is here. If I, can I say one thing? Just thing, because I I don't want people to think either that we're unsympathetic. I mean, and I, I know our our mantra is it's not in our purview because we are tied by we have to follow the ordinance and the the, 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 um, the, the strictures of the ordinance. But I just want to say that. Um, I live near the old state hospital and really right in that neighborhood. And obviously there have been tremendous changes up there. And well, what is it called now? I'll be Cole Morgan is now up there. And you know, I might say to myself, well, this is a, a business. But I think what happens is even I mean I've lived in that in that neighborhood for 40 years. And even when I moved in, it was a quiet neighborhood because the hospital was not at the state hospital was not at its height. So the reaction of the neighborhood was very similar. We don't want all this new traffic. We don't want all this new housing. And um, what do I want to say? So, so certainly I and the rest of us, I think, also are not unsympathetic to your concerns. Um, I don't know what else I can say about it. I mean, I, I definitely <laughs> feel, but I think also it's a very similar situation. And I think that you know, I'm not happy with everything that's happened up on Hospital Hill. Um, you're not, none of you are going to be happy with everything that's happening up on Round Hill. But it's just somehow all these city boards and agencies have to, and by listening to your to neighborhood's concerns, just have to come to some kind of, there, there just have to be compromises. Nobody, I'm really sorry to say, it's just true, nobody's going to be completely happy. Nobody's going to be happy. And I. 66, it's not Bancroft or. Well, but there are very small roads. I live on a very small road, and we, well, it's, I don't want to go into it, but we got a compromise of making our this tiny street one way so that all of the traffic from the new development would not come down my tiny street. So there, there are things that can be done to mitigate um, change. Nobody likes change. Believe me, you're talking <coughs> to somebody who really doesn't like change. And, um, but, so, I, so I, again, I just wanted to say that we're not unsympathetic. And you know, a lot of us have very personal things in terms of really wanting to be sympathetic, but we're tied, we're, we're constrained by the ordinance for one thing. Yeah, I just had a question that I think staff could probably answer. Uh, if the commission uh, takes a look, look at this and says, demolition's okay, that's our purview. If we take a look at it and say, the design of what you're proposing for the historic structures, looks pretty good, that's okay. And knowing that we can't really comment on the parking uh, or the, uh, the site plan, if we include in our motion that we would encourage the planning board or whatever uh, in their review of parking uh, and the lighting and all of that uh, to be conscious of the impact on the historic area and that we would be happy to give them wise counsel at their public hearing um, if that would be appropriate. Since it's not in our ballpark, but we can maybe make a little play right, come so in the back yeah, door. Yeah. I mean, it would it would be hard to put the the onus on the applicant to do that because the, because the decision is a binding document on the applicant. But right. the historic commission could certainly make comments. To as well. so and there are some standards about parking in the design right. standards, but that, they're pretty. That's more they're for not residential very parking areas. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, um, Andrew Bachelor again. I, it, it sounds to me like there's some disagreement among the commission as to what the exact purview is, whether or not parking. Uh, just, I'm sorry, I don't know your names, but the, the woman with the computer is saying that parking is there on the map? My apologies. Uh, it sounds like you're saying that parking can be, the whole project can be considered and should be considered. And I think myself and a lot of other people took your opening statement to heart and didn't talk about these other things. And I think, there, at least I am somewhat confused as to what should be raised here. And so um, I know that. You know, this is a contentious issue. I, I myself like a lot of what's going on here. I just have small comments, but I think you know, if, if my concerns, we if we go forward on this, this is just frankly grounds that are going to hold this up on appeal down the down the road if there's a confusion from the beginning of the meeting as to what's considered. So I uh, respectfully request, if, if there's any way possible, that uh, some sort of clarity can be brought to this and issued to the neighborhood, and then this meeting can be resumed a week from now 
a few days from now, but just so that people can understand exactly what's your purview. There's no confusion. We don't waste time down the road having to do this over again because people held something back or anyway. So, so I don't so want to delay so things. So if I can answer that, the, the commission is basically determining is this, is what's being proposed appropriate for the district. There are some guidelines to be able to look at that. For, for example, the ones about parking, or they just say that there, it should be landscaped and there should be some separation from the road. If it, if it does those things, then the commission wouldn't really have much of a basis to turn the budget. So it's not so much that it's outside the purview, it's just that there's limited grounds on which to And But the planning board has very specific standards okay. that they can go line by line and say, does this project need to? Okay, thank you for that clarification. Yeah. I'm Ernest and Stieler. Uh, we live down below the boiler house on Crescent Street. And I would like to know specifically how many uh, lights are going to be uh, planned for the, the parking area that go with the apartments. Um, I can't answer that question now because we recently changed the type of lighting we're going to use there. And Just you don't know how many are planned? I don't know by Thursday. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, because all these questions are going to be answered by the planning board. Um, uh, my name is Dennis Bidwell. I'm city councilor for Ward 2 as of four months ago. Um, and I just want to say two things. One, I would hope very much that this body would pass along its thinking and recommendations to the planning board. I'll be there Thursday night, as will many folks here, I'm sure, but I think planning board should fully take into consideration what they're hearing from from this body's review. And secondly, um, the community resources committee of the city council, I, I vice chair that committee, would have purview over ordinances pertaining to expanded jurisdiction over the historic district and, and I would welcome a conversation about it. down the road bringing such ordinance revisions to the thank committee you. for discussion. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I've learned that there's the right way to do something, the wrong way to do something, and the Northampton way. <laughs> and I think this is a classic example of this is what Northampton, through their city council, through their planning board, has said the job of this committee is. And I think we're finding different things that need to be added to that, and that's why we're thinking ahead. So I, I, I welcome, you know, your, your concern that you. This is Northampton, and this is the baby of the Northampton based. Um, Jane Mamie, my name is I have a couple of design questions. One, uh, when you remove the bunkers from the boiler house, what will the elevation? from the front or the west side or Crescent Street side of that uh, um, apartment complex, what difference will that be from uphill? If how you're many, on the uphill? How many feet different going down to the front just, just of the boiler house elevation. apartments? Well, it's, it's 12 feet from the road above the boiler house okay. to the entry front door to the boiler okay, house. Okay, thank you. And my second question is, on the addition to Gaywick, you showed a picture with balconies. Which direction do those balconies face? Uh, yeah, west. They look over at the parking lot behind the existing parking lot that's there already. That's north. Well, it's west. It's in the sunset direction. So they look. You'd never ever be able to see it from. I, I I live on Crescent Street. I can't see even see Skinner Hall, which is like right up on the precipice. I can barely see it from the top of my house from the top floor of Skinner. Um, you'd never see that part of Gaywood because it's shielded by other buildings. Yes. Bud Fine, eighty-eight Round Hill Road, that's the Yale House for the Dagen Doors. Why can't this be? that round hill road. I, I don't understand why you're sitting here talking in the abstract and looking at pictures when you could be there and see these situations. 
Now, I personally don't like the additions to the gallery from that's a matter of taste, but if you were there looking at the building, I think you'd see that it might not look appropriate. It's impossible for me to imagine you doing that without being on Round Hill Road. Well, we it's an like experience this. just to drive over Round Hill Road <laughs> and see if you can make it all the way because of the whole pothole. And that's because there's wells under the top of Round Hill Road that have been for years sending water down the street and making the potholes. And it comes around the back on the other side, the lower top, the other side of Round Hill Road. That's why there's potholes coming down the driveway from a series of small condominiums. So we as a, as a board, we have all done site visits of this area, so we're familiar with it visually. Everyone here may not be, but we, we as a group are. And it just, yeah, yeah, I suggest you have a group. It'd be nice to have a meeting there. We, we actually do have other things on our agenda. <laughs> so we have other uh, members that are not related to Round Hill that are kind of be coming in and presenting for us, so in front of us. So that, that would also limit their. Um, I have one, one question, Tom. Are these is that time sensitive? Does it, does it go down? Uh, it's supposed to be dimmable at night, but the planning board has the ability to layer on other requirements. Um, the, this one little answer to your question. I did come before this board, I don't know, a month ago, mm -hmm. just to show them what we were talking about. It was not a question and answer really. It was just to, set, to alert them to what was happening. So they've had a month to think about this. It didn't just flop in their lap tonight. I kept it to the site and walked to turn it very familiar. Perhaps not as much as you and, and, and but uh, I don't think any of us are unfamiliar with the site. Um, and uh, so, but, I mean, it's a good concern. You know, if I, I'm told I had water coming in my basement that's going up, I'd be very concerned. Um, and uh, this is not the right group to, to talk about it, but, but um, I think if it would be what the Planning Commission on, yes. that would be the appropriate group to look at that because nobody should get have water running into the basement as a result of new construction. So I'm, I might suggest just because it is past the time when we actually usually adjourn and we have two other public hearings to deal with, <laughs> that uh, because a lot of these issues are going to be resolved at the planning board hearing on Thursday that someone make a motion to continue this until the date after that. So we we do all, we have 30 days from the close of the public hearing to issue this, so we, it, we're we not confined by that at this point. But I, I would like to have some direction from you about whether the demolition is, is going to be held up. I mean, you can place a one-year um, order demolition delay order on this building. Uh, they can't because this is part of the local historic district. They can prohibit it altogether, but they can't do a demolition. Okay. So, I mean, we have multiple things within this request that um, we should address, I think, um, just to give the planning board some acknowledgement that, that, that we've thought about it and, and have some aesthetic view on it. So. Mm -hmm. Can we introduce a motion if the public hearing is continued? At this meeting or at, at following the meeting? Sure. You can do, you can do it in the course of the public hearing. Okay. So in other words, we can make a motion tonight that might address some of the issues, but not resolve all the issues. Yes. Is there, is there a motion? I will make a motion that we approve the application as submitted um, relative to demolition relative relative to the design um, of um, new and uh, rehab on the historic structures and as far as the site plan and parking is concerned uh, that we express our concerns um, for that um, so that the, the planning board is very much aware that the historical commission is concerned about the impact of this on the historic character of the area as well as the individual properties. And I think that, that that's in effect the motion which I think addresses demolition and design and then leaves the parking area which is not sadly not in our bailiwick with some sort of
concern being expressed that this is, we feel that it's a very important aspect. I just have a question. Is there mature vegetation around the mm -hmm. The park, where the parking area is going in, like the brown bombs, brown There is, yeah. There is, is there, there is a there is a planting plan in, in the set. And um, is there going to be an attempt to try to save some of that yes. vegetation? Yes. Okay, so we don't need to say that to the planning yeah. board, because that would be a big concern. I think. Yeah, I think there's only scale. I think there's only one tree that we weren't able to save. Uh -huh. We're we're work, we've worked around all of the trees, and I and I appreciate um, this gentleman's. Uh, proposal to move the parking lot back but the reason we didn't do that we looked at several different site layouts is because we're trying to save um, the existing green space as it exists and has, as it has existed for, for 100 years up there but the um, I actually believe that and this will this will be addressed on Thursday night that we are reducing the amount of um, pervious space uh, so the impervious space is being increased, or I'm sorry, vice versa. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're adding green space when we add the parking lot. Right. Right. But, yeah, I, I would just like, with all due respect, that's just not true, especially for the parking lot that's going in behind the uh, power plant. Uh, I, again, I, I'm sorry because th th this, this may not be okay, your bailiwick, but yeah. I, I would just like to say that that's. We're going to stop right okay. there. Again, okay. Just okay. Just okay. Just okay. Just okay. Great. Sure. The gentleman, again, both questions. Absolutely. And um, I, I, I just want to say to you guys, uh, this is important. Uh, we can, however, uh, talk or take up a recent uh, motion that we produce an advisory. To the uh, issue concerning um, uh, the issue of the number of guardian parking and planning. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's there about the specifics. No, I think that's actually you say the parking and lighting um, relative to the overall historic character. And I think if you address those two issues, but the first thing, demolition is okay, the design we see is okay, and then the <coughs> third thing is the, um, the advice that we see. So that's the nature of the two really three parts. First one is demolition. Right. Okay, so the item mm -hmm. question with demolition of uh, Galbraith uh, as a building altogether, and then also some peripheral uh, demolition of some ancillary uh, building or portions of it is uh, situated um, much to the west of yeah, adjacent to the boiler house. And the part of go is on the part of go. Yeah, and, and part of the part of go. Yeah, if the motion phrases as presented in the application, that covers all the purposes. Thank you. Um, so, do you part of your motion go separately? I know, I think that's the motion is a three part of the motion. Three part. Um, uh, is there a second one? I just want to, I just want to commend you. I had, I looked at your materials, but I wasn't at the meeting where you came and gave up a presentation before. And I, I know how difficult it is to work with these structures and these settings. And I, I really want to commend the effort that you've made, especially in kind of reviving that way. It looks like so much was buried by those old, um, or that addition that was going on. And, it's lovely to see you know, the full character of a comeback, I guess, and I think that the new edition has really complementary to that and will even make it look more historic, which I love. And also the boiler house, my gosh, I mean, that's going to be transformed. And again, I know how difficult that is and expensive, and I think I can speak for all of us that we appreciate the effort. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Any other discussion? Be down and call the vote. All those in favor of, of the motion on the floor, raise your hand. All those opposed? And then we would also need a motion to continue the hearing and until the following date. Uh, time and date certain. So I don't know if we. I time and date certain. So I don't know if we want to go until our regular scheduled meeting in June or after the special meeting prior to that. Better to move the regular schedule. So continuing it is we would focus just on the parking lot layout. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. So 
so right, and they and the commission by by continuing the hearing rather than closing it could also take into account any changes that were made at the planning board hearing. Okay. So, so we just will at that hearing have one issue on the table which has to do with the design of the parking lot. Unless there's been a change at the planning board hearing. Okay. So can someone motion to continue the hearing until June 27th of five statement. Um, we don't have a perfect name for it um, as of yet. Um, currently, what exists now is uh, sort of a, ra a slightly raised tabletop intersection um, and uh, college lane. And then down the road a little bit are these fairly small granite piers called the, that have the little tiny signs in the Lyman Gate. And it, I guess historically it's been very difficult for people to know that this is the main entrance to Smith College. Everybody knows that the Great Court gates are beautiful, mm -hmm. but they're up the hill. And when you're driving and trying to find administration, um, and you know, uh, I, I, you know, when you're trying to apply, um, it's it, it's confusing to exactly know where to turn. So the um, the idea was to 
design something that was in keeping with historic character. Um, we did, when we first started this, we did read the, the, the guidelines. Um, we also, um, there is a historic precedent in the Great Court Gates, which we did not want to copy. We wanted to have the, sort of the feeling of that neo-colonial, somewhat classical design using the similar materials in a, in a similar but slightly different way. Um, and so that's what we've done. We've designed uh, on either side of this intersection, we've actually made it a proper intersection. So that right now, um, there's no curb coming in in the radius. And when a truck makes a turn, it could, it hasn't, but it could clip a pedestrian. So you can see that we actually, this, this would stay the same, the road and, you know, that whole, it doesn't show it, but that, we're not changing the, anything to do in the street itself. But, <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, that's, that's the same. But once you turn, then we're creating two radial, um, a proper driveway entrance. I'm going to turn it upside down just so you can see. Here and here, so there'll be true uh, curbs with um, pedestrian curb ramps and a, and a um, painted sidewalk. This is just left exactly the same. Um, and then new curbing until we meet the existing curbing because we have to feather the grade back into grade. Um, we're not removing any trees. We do have an extensive specification requirements for work um, anywhere near this big elm. Um, things like air spading and hydrogel and, and mercifully, which is great, that the work, the schedule for the work for, for construction of these walls is, if, if everything goes right and we get all approvals, wouldn't happen until the tree is um, in dormancy, would be in the fall. So it wouldn't be transpiring and, and that's really gonna increase its, um, its chance and we've actually had other iterations where we had the wall a little bit closer. We pulled the wall as far away from the tree as we think works with visibility for cars coming in in the wall. The walls themselves, there are two of them. Um, I'm going to call them walls, but they're actually walls, and then a sign panel. I would call that a sign panel, and then piers. So I'll just refer to them as walls. Um, are set back about 20 feet from the sidewalk which allows for um, a grass strip to, and a, a, a five foot wide concrete sidewalk to Northampton standards. Um, and then right in front of the sign walls themselves is going to be thermal finished granite paving. So it's a little bit higher, a little bit higher quality. It's a dark, a little darker color, so it will it won't ice up as easily it'll you know get warmer in the winter and, and it has a little bit more detail this doesn't this show makes it look like concrete in fact it would be slightly a, a, a sort of a richer color it's more of a gray i would say um then for the 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 sign walls themselves are about they're actually staked down in the field if you want to if you ever want to go look at them they're, they're actually where they are is is, is, is there and they're about 56 feet long which sounds like a, lo a long way but when you go out there it isn't um, and then the sign, what is it's a, it's a, a, a brick wall with um, a grand base that has some detailing on the base, and then um, a limestone cap. And then there's a curved seat wall here and here on each side, they're both symmetrical. And then there's the sign panel, and this is limestone that has a, a nice, um, detailing on the top that we sort of are hiding a little bit of a very thin little tiny, you won't even see it, except for at night, just will wash an LED cord light. It's hidden up in here. Um, and then the piers themselves are 12 feet high, 12 feet tall, um, by about, they're less than three feet, maybe two, nine, I think. Um, and their granite base, and then the limestone, their solid limestone points on the side, and then brick infill. Um, and then on each, of course, that's Smith College, Smith College, depending on where you're coming from, you'll be able to see it. And then there's a little, um, another little uh, directional, tiny little directional sign that says main entrance. So when you're walking, you can see, you, but I mean, it's clearly when you're driving, you know, this is the main entrance. Um, the trees are all, the, we're not taking any trees down. We do have some shrub plantings and herbaceous and ground cover plantings behind the wall. Um, 
but right in front of the well is just grass. We are removing five parking spaces, um, which will then be replaced as part of the Smith Pally, not losing overall, just right in front. So um, that'll kind of clean up that a little bit right now. There's cars parked almost to the, to the, uh, to the edge. And the other thing we have, which you don't see in this plan, but I'll show here, is that there's also a little bit of a wing wall, which is a seat. Um, it's a seat wall. It's not tall. And so you could sit and wait for people there to look, look down that way. So it's a, a little bit of an extra bit and a little bit of an extra bit of paving there. Um, and then we're also relocating the path. There's a, right now, um, the way people walk is there, they walk way far away from the sidewalk. And this will now continue the sidewalk, which is nice, you know, all along Elm with the, with the grass panel in front. Um, but then this other way, there are these other little uh, buildings that have little walkways. And so we're relocating that um, so they still have a way to get, to get out of their, um, their buildings and into the, into the sidewalk. Um, and we're also doing the same here. So there's choices. You can walk along here um, or you can walk there. And as part of this uh, project, there's a discontinuance that's being applied for. So the, right now, um, there's this triangle of land that the town owns that would change to be sort of the back of this or the front of this wall. And it would transfer to Smith and the maintenance, et cetera. Um, so that's being applied for. So there's some a little bit of a right-of-way swap there that's in going through the process. Um, and the other thing that's happening is that there's, um, there are some utilities that are being relocated so that this can happen. Um, there's a hydrant that's being, and that's all being reviewed by, or has been reviewed by the PW. Um, there's two or three uh, utility poles that will have the new cobra heads on them, little lights on the top of them, that are being moved forward. Right now, it's the way the lights work is they sort of come in like this and then go back out. So we're straightening that out, um, and that allows, otherwise, they, they'd be in conflict um, with the walls, um, even though the walls are set back 20 feet. I think maybe at one point it must have been a different way the road must have worked differently there, um, historically. Uh, and then there's a drain line that's being relocated um, as well. Uh, a what? A drain, I think there's a drain line. Yeah. That, that's all part of the documents and being worked out and, um, and maintenance of that, et cetera. Uh, so I think that that is the gist of it. And I, could, I guess I could give a couple more. I don't know if there's any questions or like layout or sizes of things that anybody has or any ideas. Of I was curious to know the, the lettering. Uh, is that incised or is that It's incised. Flat? It's incised, yeah. And, and it would just be a, uh, this LED wash, this, this little rope. Um, it's not coming out or anything. It's not. It's, it's just, just a soft, yeah. and just a soft wash. Um, and the great thing about this rope is that it can, it can go in curves. So. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's set back with a, there's kind of a, um, the way I detail this, it's set back so when you walk under it, you don't, you don't see it. It has kind of a lip on the top of it. It, which is in the, you have all the, you know, contract documents, we have all these profiles. The other, the other thing is there's a little, there's the same kind of a rope underneath the bench. So there'd be a little, a little light right under there. And then um, there's a, even a, a fainter one right underneath that cap, that cap there and, the, and this cap here. So just a little tiny wash. And then what's not shown here, which was added, is that there's a pedestrian light here and here and then back over there, which is one of the shepherd's crooks, um, to add more light for the pedestrians in the crosswalk. So, the so that would be the college, maybe gooseneck. Yeah, the gooseneck, exactly. Yeah. And then, as I said, the utility poles um, will have a, they're, they're, I think they haven't picked which one they want at the town, but they'll, they'll have a Right now, it's quite dark there. Mm -hmm. um, so, 
And the reason why we have the utility poles ha they want to light is to light to the other side of the street. Because um, there's no light at all on the other side. And so if we just had the, the shepherd's crook, it wouldn't light the whole crosswalk. So It's such a dangerous crossing there. So yeah. So you thought about signalizing that crossing like they have at um, Mount Holyoke? They did have studies where they looked at signalizing and and also I think they might be considering a possibly a flashing, but but it's not in these documents. I think that's another, yeah, that's another track. Yeah. And they're they're you know, anything that you can do to make it safer. This this will make it just having this here so right. you know it's a place where lots and lots of people cross and it'll it'll cue the motorists hopefully more than they are now. Um, so, yeah. Any other commission questions? Um, I just wondered about the granite pavers. Um, sure. Are they uh, rectangular pavers? They are. Yeah. They're, um, but they're in kind of a, um, you know, a staggered bond. Mm -hmm. they're, I think yeah. they're two by twos. Yep. And there's a there's a border. So there's there's thermal. So you walk across it. So there's two by twos, but it's so it's it's a staggered border. Mm -hmm. And then and then along the edge, it's. Um, water jet so it's a thermal but it's a little brighter yeah so you'll see a little bit of a tiny color it's a little bit darker a little bit of richer along right along the curve mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's nice detail nice. yeah and it, bring, it comes around the corner um, and connects with that other crosswalk in the back so it'll be special Oh, you have a question for information? Just can't vote. Um, I know I just want to ask a question <laughs> I'm wondering one thing I'm wondering if um, further down Elm Street, I think there's a crosswalk now that's sort of in front of the chapel. Is that going to stay? I mean, it's further along. The yellow one? Because, like yeah, because I don't know if there are two here right now. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you wouldn't see it. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's okay. much further now. <coughs> okay. So do you know, Gary, if you're planning yeah, so to eliminate the, that one? Or? What Allison said is that the crosswalk's really not changed. There's no work in Elm Street itself. Yeah. So yeah. the right. speed so closest there, stay there stays the same. And the one okay. at Paradise Road is what you're talking about. Yeah. We constructed an island yeah. that, that's not affected by this project. No, but there's a crosswalk in between those. No, there, there used to be a crosswalk sort of at the corner of uh, Round Hill. Yeah, that's, and that was that's moved what I mean. when we did this project in 2010. Oh, okay. That was eliminated. Yes, I haven't crossed there in a while. Um, and the other question I have is just about the sidewalks that go back on either side. Mm -hmm. From I know there's there's been a sidewalk on the side near on the park house side. But what about the other side? I mean, as we're looking at this, the left side. Sidewalks on both sides. So both sides. Do they go past the whatever the street is that crosses there? Cheap and Drive. Uh, is that the, what that's the, the, the one on the pond side continues. The one on right. the um, on the park house right. side. Actually, the park, park side, side is new, and it, it ends uh, at uh, Eight College Lane. Yeah. Okay. So that's, there's essentially a change also. Right. Yeah. That, this project really doesn't go beyond mm -hmm. um, really where the, where the existing gates right. are, where the existing pillars are. Yeah, that's right. question. Another question? Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, I, I think probably a, you better design from a traffic engineering and pedestrian movement point of view would be on the, the non-campus or the uh, our side here uh, to do the, the knuckle out um, to ex extend the pedestrian area out certainly to the width of the parking spaces there it's so that when a pedestrian approaches um, they don't make their commitment to cross until they're in view of oncoming traffic that was constructed in 2010 there is no parking on, on the okay. chapel side of the street so there's no problem over there. Well, I'd say it is a problem, but yeah. I think that has to do with lots of issues. And, right. Uh, but the parking, there was parking there. It was removed and the, the sidewalk okay. was moved fully out. Okay, so th there's um, plenty of sight distance. Yeah. There's I also the, the bike lanes. Yeah. So yeah. The, the travel lanes are 11 feet. The bike lanes are yeah. roughly 5 to 6 feet. Lane. Yeah. So, all right. Actually, we're improving the sight distance because yeah. the cars are blocking people from crossing. Yeah. That, that street, that. because yeah. that that street is used by a lot of folks. It's oh, cut yeah. through traffic, not just to get into Smith. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I have a question. How modest though it is uh, currently, would the college commit to archivally recording the existing entrance? And, and uh, so that, that could be. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, well, first of all, I tried to look it up. I, I was certain that we had some information on the Lyman Gate, and I couldn't find anything on it, but I, I have a feeling there is something on it. I don't know when it was installed. I know that Lyman Plant House was a gift to the but college. Yeah, but to the photographically, would you be willing to archive oh, yeah. this? If we haven't done it already, yes. I think we have done it already. Okay. And that's Kathy. I could talk to oh. archives and find Perhaps out what they were. Perhaps as well, something like that? Sure. Yeah, the Kelly Archives is a pretty good record. Yeah. Yeah. I have a feeling that there's lots of information on how those gates got there. And it, it had to have been a gift. I wouldn't say line of the gate. Other questions from the audience? Um, all right, then. And a motion to um, issue a uh, historic district certificate of appropriateness uh, for this project. So moved. Second. Session. I think it's a great, it'll be a great addition. I use it all the time, <laughs> so I'm looking forward to the yeah. change. Yeah, if you've ever tried to explain to some stranger, how do you get to Smith? Oh my gosh, I know. You know there, there's no way to yeah. explain it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. All right, there being no, uh, no further discussion, we'll call the vote. Um, all those it's in favor? Sounds really great. We have one abstention. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? There being none, motion passes. Thank you. We usually don't go to sleep. <laughs> it was worth it. <laughs> We've now 745. We will now take up the, uh, the uh, item that was uh, optimistically paid over 615, um, which is the public, public hearing to determine whether the structure at 55 Main Street, Florence, and ID 17C-204 should be determined preferably to preserve pursuant to the Northampton Demolition Ordinance, Chapter 161 of the General Code. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm Tom Reedy. I'm an attorney with Bacon Wilson uh, over in Amherst. I'm here on behalf of Cumberland Farms um, in its demolition application. I think that the commission made a determination several months ago, I believe it was in March, that the structure at 55 Main Street in Florence was May I ask you a question? Of course you come from Wilson in your other location. Does that present any conflict of interest? No, I don't believe it presents any conflict of interest. Um, what we've come across in other boards is for you to make a declaration that even though you are a customer of Bacon Wilson, that you'll be fair and impartial. Okay. It won't influence your decision. You don't need my help. Good to hear. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, please go ahead. Oh, sure. So, um, so the commission made a determination that the structure at 55 Main Street in, in Florence was uh, is significant, and now we're here um, because you have to make a determination whether or not it should be preferably preserved. Um, it is currently an approximately 1,000, maybe 1,100 square foot uh, structure on a 4,000 square foot lot. Um, immediately to the east of it, along Main Street is an existing Cumberland Farms and so the proposal is to demolish both structures 53 and 55 uh, and to erect a 3,552 square foot Cumberland Farms on that site. Uh, there are currently two fueling stations with four fueling positions. Um, we would, if, you, if you're familiar with what it looks like, currently we would be reorienting those fueling stations instead of running perpendicular to Main Street, we would flip them because it's better for site circulation. We would be adding another fueling station. So that site will now have, will hopefully have six fueling positions on it. Um, and so the house does appear uh, on Macris. It is, uh, there is a, a form B associated with it. It was built, I think, circa 1855. The uh, Cumberland Farms, I think the existing structure has some gabled ends. Um, Proposed criminal will have uh, some gabled ends as well. 
but otherwise there's really nothing specific that we were looking to do with that existing, I think it's the E.L. Smith house um, for on the proposed Cumberland Farms. So I mean, I'm, I'm happy to answer whatever questions you have, but uh, beyond that and beyond what's in your form B and on MACRIS, we don't have much information. Yeah, and on the staff report that I handed out, there's a list of the criteria that the commission can consider when determining preferably preserved status. Is this a limit of criteria? Uh, yes. It's, it's sort of an all-encompassing list. But I handed that out. I'm not trying to. So I handed out the criteria that oh, the okay. commission oh, yeah. considered. Um, the photograph of the property itself. I mean, I've got one on, this is the form B of what it looks like. Or we do need a um, special permit from the planning board. And it's also a major site plan, so we are beginning that process. We anticipate having a hearing uh, in June, I think June 23rd is the date that we're looking at. We've got an existing conditions plan of the, the two properties, uh, the existing convenience store and the existing um, 55 Main Street, which is the structure that we're talking about. And what we will be doing is a demolition Plan, but is to be put in. Sorry, Sarah. So that's what we'd be looking to putting uh, on that site, reoriented um, with a pergola over that outdoor seating. I mean, we've, we've had uh, several discussions with the planning department going back and forth with different plans to see what would be good for the city, especially in that area given um, pedestrian, uh, vehicular, and bicycle access. So we've refined it a few different times. To come to this as um, the final result. The crosswalk, uh, this plan is going to be modified slightly. We're going to shift the crosswalking uh, between those two uh, curve cuts um, there. Otherwise, we've got uh, vegetation, we've got the landscaping, um, and I think it's just going to be an, an upgrade to the site and, and safety, uh, visibility, and site circulation. If, if you're familiar with that site, now trying to pull in, pull out. There's a lot of uh, queuing that goes on, and um, this will just be a, an improvement. Not really why we're here. We're here, obviously, for 55 Main Street. Right. I, I, I have a side for all of the members. Um, our role is not to look at what Cumberland Farms intends to do with the site. Interesting though it is, um, our purview is to fully consider the building at 55. So, um, uh, and, uh, and to do so relatively blindly uh, to uh, uh, the other thing that we have to comments on that we talked to the planning department about that. So we're here to talk about um, 55 and its role in the individual building, its historical significance, and, and its role within the community. Uh, on this. If anyone wants to correct me, may have something out of that. But, um, okay. Yeah, I couldn't find any additional photos of it at, at the library or particularly much information on E.L. Smith or anything that took place there as far as its, its history. We noticed that downtown Florence has historically had a mixture of both commercial, industrial, and residential uh, uh, structures that have uh, been used both for manufacturing uh, or um, for general. Um, and, um, and and also for uh, housing for workers and managers and so forth of, of the various uh, enterprises that were downtown. Um, and uh, we've seen everything from sewing machines to water filters to manhole covers to fire hydrants to plastic bags and uh, a number of other things, uh, uh, all manufactured right there um, um, in, in, in the Florence Center. Um, now the chief manufacturing industry of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the quality of the building goes on. Um, so um, it certainly is, it does raise a, raise a concern when we see that one of the remaining residential uh, buildings on the street is, um, um, is uh, proposed to be taken down. Immediately adjacent to it was a, was a residential building in our dental office. Um, uh, adjacent to that is Cooper's, and then we get into housing immediately. So 
And if they're on one main street towards Smith Folk, it's all housing, and, and certainly there is housing um, and, and commercial mix. Um, at the other end of, um, of town, at the West Building uh, on the Maple and Main. Um, and a number, quite a number of other residential uh, buildings right, running right off of uh, Main Street, uh, right there. And I'm probably missing some people can remind me of. Um, but it's a it's an interesting area that's always had a mixture, and that's what would cause us to be having this discussion um, tonight. Um, can I ask whether any of you representing the the owner? Has there been a, and our, our primary uh, purpose is to try to encourage consideration of alternative use, so even. Um, and anyone who wants to tear down a building in, in North Canada, except those buildings in the historic district, can tear down the building. All they have to do is wait here. Um, and we, we fully understand that. What we'd rather is that that not be considered a part of doing business and we simply apply early right after the year and then tear the building down. Um, what we hope is that there can be an intelligent and sympathetic discussion between the owners and, uh, and, and the historical commission to see if there's some way to help the owner accomplish their goals without having to tear a building up. Um, and do you, can you address that topic? Sure. Um, so I believe that well, when Commonwealth Farms began to look at the site, they looked at the entire site to figure out if any of it was salvageable or if it needed to come down. Um, I think the, if memory serves, the topography of the existing site, I think it, it goes, um, there's a higher grade at the road and I think it starts to tilt back, I, I believe, if you're looking. Very gently. Very gently, but then, then there's a, right, so, so right here, I believe that it's, um, you have to walk down some stairs to get to the bottom here. Um, I mean, they, they looked at it, but I think given what the proposed use would be. I don't think they could reuse it on the site. Um, if somebody wanted to come along and, and move it, I mean, it, whoever wanted to move it, it's cost and expense. Come on, Tom's not gonna have any problem with that. Um, but as far as use on the site, it's just, I don't think in the cards um, for what they're looking to do on that site. So the building that they use now is a convenience store, one second something. And what, do you have I don't any idea, know. like, what kind of light that was projected for them when it was, did go up? I don't know. I can find out for you, and I can let Sarah know, but I just, I really have no idea. So I wondered if one thing that the owners have thought of is perhaps um, taking that building down, and because it's less destructive to get this, the This one right here. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. The are. buildings are built for, like, 30 years, maybe. Yep. I know there's, like, most. yeah, the yeah. most, yeah. Probably will have to get replaced. I don't know what's in there. But, so, so but they, they are proposed. <laughs> <laughs> they're tearing them down. Yeah, it's both. I mean, they're both very it's small both sites. Oh, yeah, because yeah, where 55 is, it's about a 4,000 square foot site, and the Cumberland Farms is about a 21,000 square foot site. And so they'd be looking to take both structures down and then put the new Cumberland Farms all the way up against that near that property line. I think it's the uh, westerly property line. So they haven't thought about incorporating the new structure um, with the old one? Because that would be, it, first of all, it would be really... Uh, Unique. <laughs> I know, I know yeah. how these going to operate. Yeah. I don't like to yeah. think outside yeah. the box, but I'm just saying, you yeah. know, there might be a way to solve this problem. If they're going to take the old one down and they're building something new anyway, you know, maybe they could design it so you keep the, you know, the, it's a tiny little building and it sits right there on the street, mm -hmm. you know, it could be, I don't know, they could make it um I mean, I think, I don't think they're gonna do it, um, but I think that if you look at how far it's set back and where the new building will be set back, I believe the new building is pushed closer to the street. It's gonna be sidewalk, uh, a pergola, uh, outdoor seating area and then the building and then there will be parking spaces towards the north side of it. So that's the, those are the existing conditions. If you go two pages you'll see the proposed site plan. Um, I 
and it's somewhat of a uniquely shaped site. There's that spur track um, that goes around along the, the east wedge. Wedge border. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I did a lot of research on that spur track to figure out, in fact, who owned it. And I mean, we, I was going back to the early 1900s, late 1800s. It just, it, and to your point, I mean, that's <laughs> what this area was used for was a commercial, industrial, residential um, piece. Yeah, yeah. The existing Carmel Cars was built in 1972. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
yeah. and we mm. run into this problem. Also, uh, okay, you have this building, and then you move it, and it's out of context, and it's no longer showing right. what the street looked like yeah. with, the, with the different types of buildings. So that's my concern about encouraging moving in. I mean, I, true, it does preserve the structure, but it's then totally out of context. Well, our, our concern, we recognize that this is an historic building on its own. We also recognize that it, it is one of um, a very small number, if not perhaps between, between Locust Street and uh, Maple Street. Maybe the last residential, um, so building that built that's solely a residential facility, regardless of how it's used right now. But, um, but I think it may be the last one on this left after um, uh, a number being taken down. So that adds to its uh, preservability. Um, what I'd like to do is, is we suggest to the group and to you can as I did, we ask the petitioners to recognize that this is this is a concern of ours. The building, but also the building as a as a um, as a, as a sign of, of um, uh, a, a part of what the Florence Center was, which is the, the mixture that we described. And um, that we are not anxious to see um, the last residential facility on um, Main Street uh, torn down. Um, we also recognize that this, there's, there's a bit of a negotiation process here because there's a finite end to these, these demo plays. Mm -hmm. um, and that uh, we have and, and would, would entertain a, a dialogue uh, because we can we can shorten demo plays mm -hmm. um, at any time um, when we feel that um, their values have been fully manifested. So um, if we I mean, what we're concerned about, I think, is sort of general appearance of that it will sort of look like a real reliable entrance and end. It's, it's, it's more classical reliable. Um, I, mean, I didn't question the, uh, the, the data, the narrative shows very much. That's too early for classical I mean, survival. I think it's great for <coughs> Mr. Chairman, if you want to, there's some elevations in that packet if you want to flip more towards the back. <coughs> Just to see what the whole right. building is going to look like. They're tied right to the house and tied right to the to wall. Is there? A, I see that essentially the, the new building was sit on kind of the same platform, same footprint. Um, <coughs> that, that's that's a valid description. Eclectic, based on a lot of um, 19th century so called improvements. Um, Bruce, is there, is there a way to, we can't, we can't turn a couple of farms, a couple of farms have to have its commercial interest. Mm -hmm. Currently, it would also, ironically enough, be in, mm -hmm. end into the street um, uh, footprint. Um, is there a way to, is there a way to, I mean, this is the, this is the front of the house. I mean, this is this is the couple of farms. Um, is there a way to make the end of the house be preserved? No. You're, you're groaning. <laughs> what I'm saying is that yes, you, you could design it. I don't think Cumberland Farms is well, going to do that. No. They probably have a prototype of yeah, the right. Yeah, the, these are designed. Ducking Dunn has done all kinds of things. <laughs> <laughs> it's a much smaller process. Yeah, I think the trusses that they use, I mean, this is, um, I mean, their prototypical store, uh, if you're going down, uh, I think it's Route 9 and where, it's like 44,754 square feet. So that's what they typically put because of the site constraints here. They're looking for something smaller, 3,552, but it's the trusses. They've got a special order that, that, that they're going to use. But I mean, it, quite candidly, I think it's all branding. I mean, yeah. it's the way that they look when you're driving down the street, you know it's a Cumberland Farms because of those 
dormers that are on the roof because of the you know green stripe around um, and the stone uh, veneer on the on the base. And we are doing some different things here, like the pergola was something that um, the planning department requested, which is not something typically that they would do. Um, so they are making some, but I think when it comes to the structure and how we're going, how we would marry, and I'm only a lawyer, so don't go with architecture or engineering, but how we would marry the front of the existing E.L. Smith House with what's going to be for the rest of the Cumberland Farms, I, I, I can see that's posing some problems. And then you, you, you know, traveling and a location, I'm sure you've seen places where you go, oh my God, there's a McDonald's in there and there's not a single golden arch anywhere and there's not, there, there's no. Yes, there's not, not as many, but yes, I, I, I oh, yeah. can appreciate done. your point. It's done. But you, you have to just throw this away and start over again. Well, no, I mean, I guess, you know, if they were to reuse the house and build an addition on the back of it, I don't know. I mean, you might have to, you know, fiddle over the site plan a little bit, but it doesn't seem like it's totally out of the question. I, I mean, I would have to sit down and look at it, but. Is there such a version to this idea that that you that the company would want to just wait out a year. I think so. Uh, I think they would be okay with waiting out. And um, this and this is this would change would result in so much more, and the cost of this re, of this construction would result in so much more money. That was worth this whole this whole effort. <laughs> I'm here, so I've got to imagine. Yeah, I, I, I mean, a, a, apparently, I think it's the main issue is site circulation on the existing site is just pretty poor. I mean, if you look at the existing conditions, there are parking spaces to the rear of the site, there are parking spaces in the front of the site. If you've got to get a 45 foot 18 wheeler, either a tanker truck or a delivery truck on that site, I mean, you're causing problems with the easterly of Dr. Falk. We've had many meetings with to try to figure out a plan that worked for him and for us. And so I, I mean, I think it's, just, it's an improvement, it's an upgrade. I don't know what that means as far as dollars in the door. I've got to imagine that there will, will be some increase if we're going through this process. But I think just compared to the existing, I mean, even talking with the abutters, just um, how much of an inconvenience it, it can be. And I think this is just, a, it's a better setting. I know we're not necessarily looking to look at them in the future, but mm -hmm. that's, I think, the way that they're approaching it. I think there, there are two things. You either incorporate the building into your design or you move it off site. And I think if we can impose a demolition delay with those two conditions, that if they come back with a design that shows they're using it, fine. Yeah. Uh, if they come back with a plan for relocating it, fine. Yeah. I would like to see them consider both of those. Yeah. You, you know, we're, I mean, we're happy to consider it. I just yeah. want to be realistic and not necessarily yeah. to have you get your yeah. hopes up to oh. say yes. We well, definitely. I think our our we job are. has to be. But again, like the we building. are. Totally no, I, I, I. That's why we exist. Totally. Understand. So we have to yeah. justify our existence. No, I mean, not that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I just to see if there's some way they could, you know, make the build. They could use the existing building and build off the back of it and make it more, more look. You know, a little bit more like it fits in with the, the village. I mean, if you, would you mind flipping a few pages just to take a look at the <laughs> proposed elevations that we've got there? Um, and there's some. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, that's, I think that's going to shed dormer instead of the gable. I think this has just a couple of gable dormers. So I mean, just you know, what level? Mm -hmm. 
I mean, when I look at that and I see the gabled end, I look at that, I see the gabled end. I mean, would a, a window on that gabled end make a difference? I mean, we, I, candidly, I don't know. Well, it's not our job to design them. No, I'm just asking for whatever it was. I'm always curious. Yeah. 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 Is the architects. I think there there are architects there. I would hope you would. Understood. So can we make a motion? Yes, please that we um, that we declare the structure to be by Main Street Florence, mm -hmm. preferably preserved, which triggers a demolition review process of up to twelve months. Which This would, this would impose a demolition delay starting now to um, run 12 months on that on this application. From from the date it was first brought to the Is it up department. to 12 months? Yeah, up to 12 months. Yeah, right. With the right, right. encouraging right. the incentive. And we would be happy to engage in continued dialogue with the yeah. petitioner. We'd okay. look at other ideas. Um, and um, that is not, that's an outside number of the, the 12 months. Uh, that is uh, uh, can be uh, shortened if if the committee votes to shorten. Um, okay, all those uh, in favor, please uh, raise your hand. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Thank you for your time. Okay. Stop the vote. Next letter. The determination of historical significance pursuant to the Community Preservation Act, Smith Charity, Building 51 Main Street. I'm Lady Azish. I'm the current president of Smith Charities. And uh, I don't know if you got in your packet um, a letter I had sent to Sarah. Does it got colored copies in it? Yeah, okay. Because I brought I brought extras. Does anyone want? Yeah, that's how we so I'm I'm kind of in the same camp you are. I'm looking to preserve and restore the Smith Charities building. Um, we we did a huge project about 20 years ago, which we actually received an award from the Historical Commission for the work we had done. Um, what I'm hoping to do is apply for a CPA grant and a Massachusetts Historical um, Commission grant um, in order to get a study done to study the outside of the building, the inside, the mechanics, um, with an eye toward preservation, restoration, to give us a roadmap of you know what we should be doing, what we should be looking at, and for future trustees to be able to follow and and to keep up the building. The reason we're looking at grants at this time is because the way Smith Charities makes its money is by lending money and receiving mortgages, and we are restricted by the will of Oliver Smith on what we can and cannot do. This is the only investment we can do. We can't touch our principal. And when the heyday, when we were able to invest $110,000, the interest rates were 12 and 14%. Interest rates are now 3%, and our expenses haven't gone down. We've had to cut salaries. We've had to cut even the stipends that we give to the kids, which is heartbreaking. But we're not at a point where we have money that we can spend to help restore or take care of the building. So I'm trying to look outside the box and go to CPA and go to the, um, Massachusetts and see what I can do there. And wish me luck because 
that's my first experience in grant writing. So. Um, so I'm just really looking for your support. It's a beautiful building. It's, um, I have, Smith Charities is near and dear to my heart. I mean, I got an old mortgage that was signed by my great grandmother to Smith Charities. And so it's been a long history, even personally with Smith Charities and we just hope to be able to keep that building and and one of my high in the sky dreams, we'll see what happens, but if you look in at some of the, the pictures, there was uh, the lobby was was uh, updated and I'm sure they thought it was a great idea in the day. But it was, I, I was just, when I first saw the pictures, I was so sad. And then when I was touring the building, some of this original woodwork is downstairs. And whether or not we could actually use that in restoring the main lobby would be a very exciting project. But first steps first, and we just like to get the study done. and and be able to go from there. So, so the, the, the support you're looking for is for the study? Right, to, to have this study done. Because I can go for the CBA, CPA grant without uh, support from the Historical Commission, but they like to see a letter of support from the Historical Commission. Yeah. It's kind of a like, yeah, you know. <laughs> it's not historical. They'll want right. To. They'll they'll like to see that letter too. So mm -hmm. I'm just um, this is where I'm starting and hoping that you'll support our efforts to to try to. There's no funding to even do the study at this point, right? No, I'm so I'm I'm. It's I'm, not like you could do the study and then. No, I'm looking to the CPA and the Massachusetts at the same time because the only matching funds that Massachusetts will will recognize is CPA funds. Um, we do have a little bit in an account, you know, for like if the furnace goes or, you know, something tragic happens that we can quickly do something. But um, other than that, it's skin and bones. Well, I say this in the hope of helping you. I, I sit on the CPA for this, this whole mm -hmm. um, So my, my comments are meant to perhaps assist you with your, you know, put, put your application together. Um, Will you have um, more than one bid for the study? For the study? Oh yeah, we'll we'll be putting out an RFP for. Okay. So you be able to present three bids, the minimum. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. For the CPA to show that it's, it's a it's a commercially viable or a, a, a price that's being offered. Right. And I'm any anything you want to throw my way, I'll give you my email. Yeah. This is normally known as a sort of structured uh, report, and you would hire a, a qualified architect who works with historic buildings to really examine the building top to bottom. Right, with an eye and, toward restoration. And then talk about yeah. what needs to be done to stabilize, to preserve, mm -hmm. right. and then move on into rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, that's a, a fairly common mm -hmm. package for a qualified architectural firm to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if you, um, you know, can approach you know, several architects. I have the name of a one one in particular that yeah. I got from the guy at Massa the Massachusetts Historical they, Commission. They, they would know I, I got a name people. from them. I know another company in Connecticut. Yeah. Okay. And, there you go. and <laughs> I know the last time we did work, it was more of a preservation type mm -hmm. thing. They did some sort of wash on the building mm -hmm. to help stabilize the was it slopping? The spalling. The, 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 yeah. The yeah, and so I think it's, you know, it's, it's been 20 years. We need to look at the building, whether we got money or not. We need to, you know, pay well, attention. Well, as, as far as the components that I think would make this project um, desirable to the CPA, it would include um, the historic building report uh, that Bruce mentioned. Certainly include um, uh, significant. Well, we're not going to have a report. I'm. You're applying for funds I'm to I'm applying do that. for yeah. funds to get the study done. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, you, you, as part of the application for the study to be done, um, reminding the CPA, CDC of the um, historic, of the, excuse me, the community role that Smith 
Right. Yeah. Not, oh yeah. All my, not, not everyone knows. No, no all, all my arguments aren't aren't here. Okay. Well, <laughs> talking I'm about not only the, the beneficial role the Smith Sherry's played within the community, which we've asked, yeah. but also other sources of potential financial support, because the CPC, like many other money giving organizations, would like to see the organizations themselves are stepping up and and for either have or foresee engaging in fundraising themselves. So um, that's so that's why the that's a, that's an issue. And now we'll get into that when I get to the CPC. But there's Smith Charities is an odd duck. It's not your average nonprofit. They're, it's they're very different and very <laughs> and very restricted on what we can and cannot do under the will of Oliver Smith. And unfortunately, that's part of what. We, we, we're used to that. I mean, between so, yeah. the Academy and Forbes and Lily and Smith Charities and, and uh, the, the fairgrounds and there's a good number of uh, yeah. hot dogs walking around. Yeah. <laughs> but um, unfortunately, there's a lot of restrictions on what we can and cannot do, and that's get that. what's tough. And the average Joe in the middle of the street is going to say, Smith Charity, they've got the money for Pete's sake. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but <laughs> uh, we'd like to help you along with that. And I think okay. I, I appreciate it. When I say that we certainly can uh, write a letter and so someone has to make a motion. As soon as someone makes a motion, <laughs> yes. um, so the motion would be that, that the Park uh, uh, Commission uh, support the application of the charity uh, to uh, submit an application to CP to the Northampton CPC. Uh, for a project to fund a study of the buildings needed. And also Mass Historical Commission. Are you applying yes. to Mass Preservation Projects? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So and also to the Mass Preservation Projects. Mm -hmm. Go big or go home. So moved. <laughs> okay, that's the motion. Uh, is, there, is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, and we're both all so discussion. Can I say some question? Do we yes. also have to include the language that we're determining it, even though it seems like how could we not determine it <laughs> historically <laughs> significant? Right. No, I yeah. think that's the phrase that, that should be in there that we're saying that the, the building itself is historically significant. Oh, yeah. And therefore we support it. It's within the um, downtown it's national right. register. Right. 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 It's a yeah. But I think there's something that how more it helps us. It's nice to have the extra on its own. Remind me of the date again on the building. Uh, 1865. Yeah, 1865, 66, yeah. General Grant style. And there, there are several architects, or at least a few, that have worked on Pratt buildings. So that would be... Yeah, if, if you have any other names of, you know... Can you give them to Sarah? Yeah. Yeah, she's got my email address. Now, we, I assume resources in uh, Forbes? Yes, come to Forbes. We we'll have everything we have. And the, the historic structures report would include that. They would, yeah, right. they would include a thorough investigation of the land. So you'll have to look ahead of you on the I do. I do. You want to write a letter to the yeah. CPC supporting your application for Okay, so the letter won't come to me. It's going to go directly. No, no, no. Okay, and vote on that. Yeah, we okay. okay, all of them. We didn't vote on it. No, no. 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 no we had it. We had it. So sorry. There was discussion. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, all those in favor, please say. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the next item. Uh, no. Let's do number 10. Moving ahead to number 10. Um, review and approve historic mitigation memorandum of understanding in Upper Roberts Meadow and Louisville. We apologize to all of you for keeping waiting so long. Thank you. You, you know what we've been doing. Um, so, uh, I guess, like quick, to quick backstory on this. So, yeah, yes, um, DCW came in. I think during the winter to present plans for the dam removal, which has since received Transcom and, and other state permits, um, and was required to have a, an M a MOU for historic mitigation under the Section 106 review process. Uh, Jim Laurel would be here, but he's not in the city, so he this, this, he asked me to put this on the agenda. Like, and there's obviously people here have an interest in the in the dam as well. 
And I think all we would do is say we have looked at the memorandum and there it is. There's a, there is a there's signature a line for, for the historical commission. Right, so what it is. But are we just acknowledging that it is in the mill? I don't think we have any input in it. Can I, can you I, sir, I you certainly could. Can I certainly could. Jump in here and, yeah. and, and please forgive me if I'm, I got it wrong, correct me. My understanding is that this issue centers around the use of stone, uh, some stone elements that were that were suddenly mentioned to be moved from the dam to Pulaski Park. Is that right? That's part of it. There's an issue that, that was raised during um, in the MO, MOA, so remember I understand from May 5th, you guys might have all gotten a letter yeah. that came. Mm -hmm. Bottom line is that the city, um, the, the state is basically saying, wait a minute, that was way premature. Mm -hmm. Yes. It should not have been submitted to to you yet. It should not have even come to them yet because they're not convinced that this is the right course of action. The, the concept with the stones is layered. They also did not realize that Pulaski Park was going to be renovated. So they're like, whoa, hold the phone. A, we don't think this is good. We're not ready to say anything about the dam because we don't believe that it has been um, properly vetted, but they want more proof that this is actually even, um, that there was enough research done to basically mitigate or to even decide if this should be removed or not. They're not convinced, or that's one. Two is this, uh, this idea of the, of the rocks, the, the blocks going to Pulaski Park. They're like, that shouldn't even be on the table for us because it shouldn't even be on the table for you because you did not even go get permissions properly through Mass Historic. So this shouldn't, we don't think, we're actually here, all of us, to basically say, we don't think you should vote on this unless you say no because this should not even be on the table yet because they're not prepared to even take a look at this because they want to go back four steps. Well, also, um, it, I, I, there are two letters from the Mass Historical right. Commission yeah, um, directed towards the permitting office of the Army Corps. Right. And both of them state that there's, ar there's potential archeological sensitivity in this area that has not been looked at. Right. And so, um, why was? Do you know why that was not done as part of the? Um, it hadn't. Process? It hadn't come up, to my knowledge. And that hadn't. That hadn't. Yeah. I don't. Well, uh, well, it had come up. We yeah. gave you a report of it, right. and and unfortunately. But it, it that was yeah. on historic archaeological, right? This is. I think this is more. Um, Prehistory, prehistory is, yeah, because yeah, we're talking about native activities. Right. They're talking about native peoples and getting in touch with the tribe. Um, if I'm understanding this yeah, correctly. Yeah, you'd have to look at that report from the University of Massachusetts, but I think it did include. Prehistory? I, I okay. believe it did. I'm not certain of that. Okay. Well, if I can, I can sort of summarize. I'm not sure what our role in all of this is right now. Uh, other than advisory? Well, I'd ask to sign this agreement. DPW has asked you to take a look at it and sign it. You could say, sure, this looks good. You could say, no, this looks terrible. Here are, here are elements that we have concern yeah. about. Or you could just not take any action. Well, well, let me express my opinion. This is just one person. This is two different projects. Obviously, this is Park, and then this is Robert the city long ago received some message from the state saying you have to take the dam down. And the city, we've been around this. Um, my understanding is that it's pretty final that it has to. No, okay, I don't know. It, it, I'm, um, whatever the, whatever the, the, the courts decide is this whatever it's going to be, I don't know. But I don't see the value of mixing the two projects and others. Why, why should stones from that dam be suddenly put into, into uh, uh, Pulaski Park? But the, is, that, is that part of the memorandum of agreement? Is that the stones? Part of the part of the, yes, Jim and, Marilla. I, I mean, included. stones are not, are not cheap, but, but I know that it, it didn't come through this committee that those stones were going to be suddenly put in Pulaski Park. It was, it was suddenly a fait accompli as far as what I could see. And I don't have a strong, you know, because we never stipulated that there would be stones from that dam put into, into uh, the park and neither did the uh, CPA. Uh, and I don't think that, I mean, I, don't, I doubt the designers of that park yeah. would plan to incorporate in those. I think they did. Those, they are, did? those are included in the design. 
design. Oh, they are. Yeah, they still okay. are. And they've yeah. saved yeah. them and they've selected the stones they want to use. And no. There's, it's just sort of these are the blocks from the dam because they're still in the dam. Just so exactly. Um, I'm not going to get into the question of the dam survival itself because that's not my purview. But I'm, I would propose that we not support the movement of any stones from the dam to the last before. That may not be a popular motion, but that's my motion. What? You can't make a motion. The chair. That's your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Would anybody like to make a motion? I would. Let the sound say where they are. I would. What he said. Okay, well, just, okay. So here's the thing. Right. Like, let me just. I know it's late, <laughs> but I'm just trying to put the sequence in here together. Okay. So Massdorf was saying, hold it. You so can't do any more work on this until we get a set of archaeologists out there to look at this right. and study it and right. do a report, yeah. which could take. A while, right? So the there are these holes in the new construction at Pulaski Park. They're supposed to get these blocks that. I mean, they're going to be sitting. It's going to be sitting there for years with these empty holes because not only do the, does the archaeology have to do their work and the report be done and then getting approval from Mass Historical and should go ahead if they get it, then the dam has to get taken down. So. Well, is there I some like interim measure to? That I, I don't know. So I mean, they could go buy some. Right. 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 Jim, Hirsch, at our last meeting, when the when the idea came up or when we first heard about the granite blocks, one of the blocks the park, Jim Lorello said it was his idea because he's on the committee or something, and he okay. felt it would save money for the park, but he also stated that. They don't know the condition of the blocks right. too, if they could be utilized, and it and it depended if the dam was removed during a period of time where they could use them and they were usable. They'd like to use them to save some money. Otherwise, they were going to use other blocks. Well, we know from testimony from you guys that the condition of the block is pristine. <laughs> they're beautiful. And you've been telling us that for yeah. years. Right. And that, they're beautiful. Okay. So, so the Wait, but are they going to be beautiful once the dam is dismantled? Are they going to dismantle? Um, so, but, but you're right. I think he was just he was an engineer's way to save money. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe it. I think we just need to defer until the archaeological. Yeah, we don't really have a choice. Not, yeah. this is, not, I think, well, I think the point is okay. well taken that this is a very, we, we probably should need to be voting on this right now because it's going to be years and years, years. What are you going to say on the park? Is, isn't it going to be done in two phases? It is. is I don't it? know where the blocks are going. Are they going so, to I believe it's in phase two, part of a retaining wall in the back. Oh, uh, okay. But, uh, if I can sit up at the table here. I'm going to observe it. Yes, Jonathan Stoker, Prof. Chester Road. And uh, yes, I, I realize all the limitations that you, the Historical Commission, has. But once again, I just want to say something that really irritates me. That, and uh, it's not with the Historical Commission, because you've been more than fair and patient with us. And I, I, I think that you've been had, too. If you remember that meeting when Jim Lorello came in yeah. with a, a representative from GZA, and he had, I think there were six points on it, I can't remember now, but he had like the footpath and the blocks, and he mentioned all these things. Yeah. And when we were here, we, we weren't included at all in uh, coming up with that, which is okay because they said, oh, we're just presenting this for MCLA to the board. I, if, if you remember that, and my being naive thought that that's actually what they were going to do. And if you remember, at the next meeting, I came up with some suggestions, like saying, "Well, we could do this or we could do that." And he said, "Oh, well, this is premature because we're looking for the input and we're going to do that." I don't know if you realize it or not, but when the DPW submitted its forms to the state and to the federal government, the 404 permit. They included in that permit that the Historical Commission has approved the plan which they submitted for input. That, that, that as if that had your blessing and approval. That was part of their submission. I don't think we did. I don't think you did either. And, and I'm just, 
because I remember when I came in, you said, oh, there would be an appropriate time for you to come in with alternatives. Well, I don't know if it was a year ago, six months ago. I haven't heard from you, but there hasn't been a meeting. But this went here, and the 404 permit, they had the Historical Commission approving it. They also had the Northampton Conservation Commission approving it, which they did after the fact. But anyway, that, that bothers me, and if I was a member of this commission, I would be upset with, uh, I think, a, a misrepresentation, if it is a misrepresentation. Yeah. I think it is, but I don't know. Now some of the people that have submitted it are no longer employed by the city. Well, so I just want to say that. I, wouldn't have, I would think they would have had to have a letter from us, though. I mean, if you can say they reviewed the I, I think so, too. And if you remember at that reflect. meeting, then if then you remember at that yeah. meeting, I said I thought there had to be a letter or some sort of vote or do something. And I think uh, Sarah said, no, it's a memorandum. Of and there was some confusion. And I met with Sarah again. She cleared that up with me that, oh, yeah, it's a memorandum of understanding. You don't need a vote. But in that submission of that grant, they said that you approved it. The simple as that. So that bothers me. I think it should bother you, but I don't know if it will or not. So I just, I just wanted to say that publicly as part of the record. Well, I, I would, I'll make a motion that we um, hold off on them, if that's the right terminology, hold off on signing a memorandum of agreement. Um, until the archaeologists have concluded, or con conducted and have concluded and prepared their findings. Um, Can I I'm just point out that there's an awful lot more conditions than just that that have to be cleaned up as well by the court. Um, you know, Roma Simon had said she's the Sort of yeah. uh, you know, she said that this was premature and that it's insufficient from the very beginning of, you know, as to whether or not, uh, you know, alternatives to demolition were considered. Um, you know, there are all kinds of tribes listed on this. Right. There's, it's more than just the historic, uh, the archaeological preservation of, of, you know, there's, there's an awful lot more. Um, the scope of the project is more than the Mass Historic Commission was aware of. Um, and now we have this other letter from Ed Bell um, right. that just came on the 17th. He's also an archaeologist. Too. Yeah. So it's more than just, oh, you have to get yourself a qualified archaeologist and do this. There's, there were several other questions that she posed in her May 5th letter. And it grown up. And, and so, you know, if they find, if she's the state historic preservation officer and she finds the memorandum of agreement that the court presented was premature and insufficient, then as a local board, I certainly wouldn't go, you know, over that and, and take a vote to approve or frankly even take the a vote. The so are not, are not available now because of probably not likely to be available for anything for quite a long time um, as, as, as this project finds its way through the various offices and courts. Um, and the park was constructed and finished far sooner than, than this dam would be reached. Um, so I think it probably solve itself. Um, but but I, I certainly don't mind if we were to vote and vote Joe's is that we um, get the commission to file. Recommend uh, movement of the stones to the classic bar. I, I think it's more that we want to defer. We want to look yes. at this again. We don't have once the once the issues that were brought up. What do you think about the yeah. 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 It has nothing to do with the stones. It has to do right. with all these other issues. Yeah. I think there are 18 all pages issues, in the memorandum. So. Yes. And, I was and the, the stones are one paragraph. Right, yeah. Yeah. So and obviously so the, the state so. historic preservation officer has said it's a premature submission. Right. Right. Here are the things that need to be done. Right. Who are we to act on exactly. something when yeah. it's still in the well, you think, I, I agree with all, everything you just mm -hmm. said. What do you think of the idea of the reserve value of us at least having our opinion on record that even if it were all permitted, we still are not recommending them. I think we need more information. Yeah, we, we I think know it, the, you know, we can't basically yeah. you know, dismiss 
the ship right. off. Oh, yeah. 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 No, uh, yeah. We're certainly not doing that. I'm mean, no. saying you do all that. I mean, we don't report to them, but we, you know, we work with them. And but you know, we, sort of, we defer to a higher authority. Right. And so I think that that's fine to do. You know, I think it's, that's what we should do. But you know, the other question becomes like, who pays for that? Like, I don't know. Is the city responsible for paying for that, or is it? I mean, think who, a project who, who pays for the archaeologists, the engineers no, that are around? I don't know. Oh, well, we had to do it at the Connecticut River Greenway, the, the mm -hmm. planning office had to, they had to cover that cost. Okay, so that's what they should do. They should have done that anyway. Business, yeah. I don't, it seems odd that they couldn't have tried to get around that, but anyway. Well, I think, you know, our viewpoint is that they should have done an awful lot of things over the course yeah. of as many years. Um, they've had different leadership, you know, I mean, we had, we had Claire Higgins, who's now gone, and we had Terry Colhane, who's now gone, and Ned Huntley, who died, and Jim Marilla, who's gone, and I mean, what and, and all of the work. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, all of them. That name will still be there. <laughs> uh, you know, we filled in before we're <laughs> And you know, and there there were gaps, and we were you know kind of shouting in a big dark hole, and no one was paying a lot of attention until the state came along and Rona's letter, you know, pinpointed an awful lot of the same concerns that we've had. Yep. And, you know, thank God someone is finally listening. Uh, you know, we've talked with you in the past and, and you've said, well, you know, what can we do? That's what you said at the last meeting. What can we do? We, we don't have anything we can do, you know. But you do, you've always had a voice for all the other people that came in tonight, you said, you know, you'd send a letter or, you you know, a letter of support or whatever. Well, we haven't gotten that. I mean, um, I know you can't stop the city from taking down the dam. It wasn't I, our idea at all. Exactly. You know that. Exactly. And unfortunately, dams weren't included under the, the structures that you could do a demo delay on. And we understand that. But, you know, a letter, a letter of support, a letter, you know, saying, you know, initially when we planned on being here, we had not yet received the letter from Rona Simon. Right. We were concerned about Jim Larilla's plan about moving the block. This was one man's plan, and now he wasn't even working for the city anymore. Mm -hmm. So to have such a plan that we were so, you know, uh, we objected to so vehemently, uh, put in place by someone who's no longer even a city employee was just too much. <laughs> um, but since then, you know, we've received these two letters and um, they really do support an awful lot of what we've been saying for many years. And we're hoping that since it isn't just us, you know, we've been, you know, marginalized and told that, well, we're people who live above the dam, you know, um, <laughs> but we're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, finally the State Historic Preservation Officer is, is saying something that maybe you we'll pay attention to. And, uh, She's doing her job. Yeah. yeah. yeah a, a letter stating that you yeah. agree with the, the position set forth in the letter that the dam may have significant historical value. Well, we, but the, commi the commission has done that. We have yeah. I think it would, if it, if we are going to issue something, it should be something new. No. No. But it also, I don't know what kind of um, authority or uh, you know, muscle have NHC has with the Army Corps, but it sounds like they're essentially saying, you, you know, we're not going to sign on to this permit to do this. Because it's a right. Section 106 review, right. they're, right. they're, they're, they're right. required right. to sign. The Army Corps agency takes right. agency so project that has to go through the 106 process. Right, so we don't have, I mean, we, uh, we can support the in archaeological investigation, that's great, but I mean, really, it's mass historical was who's was running a damper on this whole thing. So, okay. Do we need to vote on that? We had a motion on the table, with no second. Okay. So that was Barbara's motion. So what's that? I thought I was going to withdraw that. I think I was going to withdraw that. We go with the. We hold off on signing the, any kind of memorandum no, no. of, of agreement until um, the Army Corps cleared this up with Mass Historical and vice versa. And that 
will take care of the blocks, <laughs> at least for the time being. <laughs> Yeah. I hope that'll be on the whole. Second. 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 Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. So your voices were all so low that we don't know no. what you just voted on. We just said, we don't look at just the motion was to. Um, to hold off or not sign any kind of memo, any memorandum of understanding until um, the Army Corps has dealt with Mass Historical and has fulfilled their request, um, which has to be done anyway if they want to move ahead with us. Mm -hmm. you know, and I guess we could reconsider something in the future, but it's and not are, an issue we, right now. The proposal had been for us to sign a memorandum of understanding, uh, more or less permitting things as, as uh, uh, way we thought they were going up to this point and we had decided, said that we are not going to sign that memorandum of understanding. Thank you. 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 Thank body that submitted that to say you misrepresented us and you'd like that corrected or that would be great. Yeah, yeah. Well I don't uh, it, but I think we should if we're gonna do that we should see the the yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I'd like to see but I'd like that followed up on that we can really see what the language is and see and you know officially object to it if we were misrepresented. Would that, would that be Not that I don't believe it. Yeah, yeah we have yeah, to look so at it. And, and, and I don't expect you to believe me, but the last time I was here I submitted after I made my remarks, I submitted the documentation for that, so you have it. Plus the archaeological study. That's how come I couldn't answer your question because I gave it to the Historical Commission for your documentation, whatever you do with it. But you do have you do have the documentation from what they submitted in the 404 report. Plus you have the archaeological study. Well, it had never come across that those blocks should come down. Town. That's not, it wasn't our idea, and, and we never voted to support it. Yeah, I, I believe I represented correctly that there was a meeting where they came in, they were looking for input from this board. I came back next yeah. meeting with them, but they said, no, Unofficially, I don't think there was bad intent. I think it was simply an engineered way to move it, stuff around. It may very well be, but, and but, I, I don't want to characterize it, but, but um, when I raised the point with several people, it didn't go anywhere, yeah. except it was had the Historical Commission's approval to the state and to the federal government. And I raised the issue. But we'll look into times. it, and if it's, it's an issue, we'll discuss it at our next meeting, and then we can um, follow up with the engineering. Okay, very good. Thank, Thank you. Don't have something. Can we stop at the anti-restaurant? Well, I could make a motion. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I'm going to make a motion to table the entire restaurant. That's, that's, that's a good thing. There's new interesting things here that we're hanging around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, we're not. 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 Do we want to have Jim like Marla a second meeting? Must be. <laughs> <laughs> or was there something in particular you were hoping? Well, it was more just that we would be saying the same thing with more. more and I, I passed those along and they weren't happy to hear that. Yeah. They so, were not? No, they were. Oh, okay. Yeah. And some of them aren't possible. I don't know if you talked to Carol about it. No, no I didn't. Did you have that to the site that we what those comments were, and and we could have a discussion and quote and quote whether or not. Going on with the plans, really? What? Well, no. We well, the I can. Do you want me to summarize? I think I can remember yeah, what we talked sure. about. Yeah. So the male attendance building. Um, you, does everyone know what building that is at the state hospital? So if you go up the on the hotel, it's that big building. Remember there was With a hotel the proposed for it that went by the hotel. way? A hotel, yeah. Yeah. right. There's like a big condos. couple, like two-story porch that faces um, 66. If, you, if you're coming in on a village hill, the main 
drag on Village Hill. The building is off to the left. And there's a green space between the road and the parking, and the, the building. Um, there is also uh, a, a little bit of green space behind, on the other side of it, so the west side of it. And so what the, um, they're proposing to do is to make you know, these apartments in this building. And <coughs> on the west side, use the green space for personal pat patios off the apartment. And on the east side, put in a very large parking lot. So you would have a big parking lot abutting the main drag into Hospital Hill. And if I could say one other thing about it, which I found out, yeah, yeah. that right now they have this big ele green electrical box there that I'm assuming is staying there on the street side, and it's raised up higher than the level of the ground. And Joe, well, you know, Joe told me that Wayne Fiden said it's that way because the, uh, the parking lot is actually going to be elevated. It's going to be higher, mm -hmm. which will make it presumably obstruct the building a little bit. Or because uh, I I went by there yes well yeah, yeah yesterday and I noticed that the the land actually mm -hmm. slopes down from mm -hmm. the road towards the building yeah. so you know I was thinking oh that's great they can actually sink the parking lot. Right. Sounds there, you know, I mean I, again this is what he yeah. told me what Wayne said that it was going to be higher so that would be a question that I would probably I would ask him I, I'll personally ask the planning board but that could be like like make it even worse. worse right. So what we were suggesting in the memorialization committee looked at this the other night before our meeting is a couple things. One is that there's a very large parking lot behind Haskell, which is that ugly building that they're gonna keep, I guess. You know, the one that okay. is still awesome. functioning. Awesome. Awesome. They have a very yeah. large parking lot right behind it, which is not used, you know, it's underutilized. You know, why can't they do parking share you know, sharing? Because I mean that's the whole yeah. sustainability they, they can. Plan. So the developers actually thought of that and approached mm -hmm. DMH, and no. DMH was not willing to work with them. Because they use all of it? No, mm -hmm. no I don't know why they use all of it. Um, and so, anyway. okay, so that was one thing. Then the other thing, you know, we said is maybe they could look at flipping and putting the parking on the back side of the building and keep, to try to preserve that streetscape, that lawn, which is basically going to be taken, you know, it's going to be obliterated which I know is going to change the whole architecture of the building so that it's not as large, you know, there isn't as much area on the, the west side. And then the third thing we suggested was to try a different approach to paving or surfacing the parking area, so using a permeable pavement, maybe a grass block, um, something that would make it look more like lawn and then just pave the handicap spaces as an alternative. And that's a sustainable measure. You know, again, this is all part of the city's push to create a more environmentally friendly environment, you know, mm -hmm. landscape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no other project along that big right. wide village though. Has their parking right, right up there. Nobody has it. Yeah. Yeah. So is this meant to be residential or the hotel? Yeah. Yeah. No, these should yeah. be con residential. Condos. So condos. the hotel would, the way yeah. the yeah. body They couldn't get their tax credit. I hope these guys get the tax credits. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so I think what we're proposing is that the memorial committee sent comments, mm -hmm. sent comments for us, and so the question is, would this committee also be willing to basically support, endorse those comments mm -hmm. so that it's coming from us as well? You we'll make that a motion. So move. No, you say it. Oh, no, no, no. I just say it. No, I take it. Yeah. <laughs> I think you could just so say that. Yeah, the, the, that the, 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 we we echo the comments sent in by the memorial committee, re, per, particularly regarding the parking, and hoping that the parking could be moved either to the other side of the building by share some kind of sharing of parking in what's now the parking for the Haskell building, or um, what was it? The second thing was. But we, well, they've been flip, flipping it so that they could take the small green space they have on the Haskell side of the building and put most of their parking there, or <coughs> use you're calling it permeable yeah, parking, parking. right? Or so put it underground, right? Just something so that they're not because we really feel like it. It, it really it destroys sort of the historic character, yes. and the character of that wide. This is the entrance. Alley. The alley yeah. and no other parking has been allowed right on the street. And even for the hilltop apartments, there is parking you can see from the street, but there's quite a big green space. Mm -hmm. Can I kind of make a recommendation that we yes. make, we make that as a 
as our as our comment rather than saying we echo somebody else's. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. We can make it our own comment. That the uh, the park putting that much parking adjacent right. to the entry LA uh, is um, detracts. It detracts significantly from the uh, historic, character. Uh, historic okay. character of the entrance of mm -hmm. yeah. the yeah. area. Okay. So move with that. Okay. We don't want to kill the project though because yeah, yeah no, we don't want to go away. You know, that's the thing. Um, second. second. Is there a second? Okay, uh, any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Just one hand. Is there any reason to consider any of the other items? No. <laughs> so we will move directly on to 14, which is to adjourn the meeting. The yeah. uh, record says, oh, and I'm in Los Angeles.